Good evening, y'all. We're going to get started in a couple minutes. Good evening. Welcome. We're going to start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Phillips. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Casabon, if you would lead us in the invocation. Separation of church and state. Deputy, please remove Ms. Segura. Have a good evening. Martha, hit your button. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come out tonight to handle the parish business. Lead and guide us in everything we do, think, and say. 
bless this meeting, bless this parish, and all that's in it. Lead and guide us taste safely home. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I wanted to say what I was going to say. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Smith? Here. Mr. Rowling? Here. Ms. Casabon? Here. Ms. Seiden? Here. Mr. Phillips? Here. Ms. Tanner? Here. Mr. Epistato? Here. Mr. Burke? Here. Mr. Kugel? Here. Ms. O'Brien? Here. Mr. Lachlan? Here. Mr. Bender? Here. Mr. Corbin? Here. And Mr. Strickland? We have a quorum. Thank you. A three minute time limit is established for each member of the public wishing to speak for or against an item on the agenda except appeals. To ensure that all speakers are heard, please hold cheers and applause. Anyone who wishes to place a comment in the record but does not wish to speak at the podium may fill out a speaker card and check the box indicating that they do not wish to speak. President Cooper, I turn it over to you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the council, members of the public, those that are here this evening, and those that are tuning in on STPG TV uh, for our May Parish Council meeting. I'll ask for a few moments of personal privilege before I present a proclamation to Employee of the Month for May. As we all know, on April 10th, our parish was inundated with severe weather. We had widespread water in the streets from large amounts of rainfall that fell in just a few short hours. The eastern side of our parish was also ravaged by four confirmed tornadoes in the Slidell area, including one EF2 and three EF1 tornadoes. In addition to the flooded streets and overtopped ditches, we experienced wind damage to over 700 homes and 50 businesses in the Slidell, Alton, and Pearl River communities. Shelters opened after the storm and were closed on April 12th, and we continue to work with our partners at the Governor's Office, Red Cross, United Way, North Lake Homeless Coalition, Violink, Good Samaritan Ministry, just to name a few, to find housing for those who lost homes. Many were without electricity due to the downed trees and power lines, but all utilities were restored as quick as possible and, and all were restored by April 22nd. We were indeed fortunate in that injuries were minor and there were no fatalities. I ask that we all keep those who were severely impacted by the severe weather on April 10th in our prayers. Since the storm, public works crews mobilized, they continue to pick up debris, now on a request basis only, and have picked up 12,000 cubic yards of vegetative debris. Our contract, a series, finished Tuesday with 52,000 cubic yards of vegetative debris and 3,300 yards of C&D, construction materials. I want to thank every member of Team Tammany for their efficient response to the severe weather on April 10th, especially our hardworking public works crews who worked to get out our streets reopened immediately following the storm while it was still raining and who assisted with clearing of the debris. Our utilities crews who worked alongside of them to bring our water and wastewater systems back online quickly. The members of our emergency operations center who seemed to know exactly where the worst weather would hit and kept us organized and informed throughout the event and continue to do so. And our public information office, who helped us keep our citizens informed and aware of the impending weather, as well as where to go for assistance if you were impacted and how to handle the cleanup process. And every other team member who took calls, handed out water, worked at the shelters, or otherwise did their part 
to get us through to this recovery phase. We thank you. And with that being said, I'd like to issue this proclamation to not only one individual, but to five individuals who make up the St. Tammany Parish Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness, led by Mr. Clint Ory and his team that are sitting right here in front. So I'll ask them to come up as I uh, read this proclamation to the Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness. <clears throat> Whereas St. Tammany Parish Government's Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness works throughout the year to ensure our community is poised to respond to all manner of emergencies that could, pot could potentially impact our area. And whereas the department, though small, is able to leverage their relationships with emergency responders, utility companies, state officials, and nonprofit organizations from across the region to compound and enhance St. Tammany's ability to swiftly and effectively respond when disaster strikes. And whereas on April 10, 2024, the eastern portion of our parish was ravaged by four tornadoes which tore across Slidell, Alton, and the Pearl River communities, damaging over 700 homes and 50 businesses, and leaving more than 30 individuals and families without a place to live. And whereas thanks to advanced forecasting and the proper planning of this department, our crews and first responders were staged in Slidell ahead of the storm, including a partial activation of our emergency operations center, allowing an immediate and coordinated response by our Department of Public Works, as well as the St. Tammany Sheriff's Office, Parish Fire Departments, Acadian, EMS, and the Red Cross. And whereas Mr. Clint Ory, the department's director, Mr. Colin Simino, assistant director, Vanessa Wall, Amanda Luckadoo, and Robert Crawford executed their well-organized plans and were able to quickly respond to the needs of our citizens to orchestrate the multi-department agency and nonprofit response to the crisis. And whereas the employees of our Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness are truly an outstanding group who perform their duties in an exemplary manner and are truly committed to serving the citizens of St. Tammany. Now, therefore, I, Michael B. Cooper, as parish president of this great parish, do hereby recognize the hard work, dedication, and accomplishments of the Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness as, he, as employee of the month for May 2024 and encourage all citizens of St. Tammany Parish and our parish council to thank them for their service and commitment to St. Tammany Parish. Congratulations. He said a few words. Um, thank you very much for this, President. And, and um, we'd be remiss if we didn't say that, you know, this it truly is what we do is a team thing. That there's nothing that we do that doesn't involve everyone else in St. Tammany Parish, from the individual citizens to the parish president and, and even some outside folks uh, with the state and otherwise. And, and so it takes everybody pulling in the same direction to have success in, in a situation like this. And when that happens, it's a beautiful thing. Um, we know how hard that is nowadays to get people to, to, to agree on anything or to cooperate. And it's amazing to see that happen. And so we, we, this is for everybody in St. Tammany Parish. We, we thank you all for your help and support. Thank you. And had I given Clint a few more minutes, he would have said he's still working on SBA loans for the commercial entities in Slidell that uh, received damage. Uh, it took a, a big effort to uh, obtain that, and they're continuing to work. So the, the restoration recovery is not over yet, and they continue to work. So we thank everybody for their efforts.
I have another matter that I ask for personal privilege. And as we know, in the month of May, it's graduation season. Graduation for high schoolers uh, at all levels, college uh, and universities. It's uh, giving our students, teachers, and parents alike a reason to celebrate. Congratulations to all of our graduates from our high schools, colleges, trade schools, uh, w what have you. I wish you all the best as you begin your next chapter and continue to make St. Tammany proud. I think Covington High's, uh, not Covington High, the, the St. Tammany Parish School Systems have their graduations, maybe even beginning tonight uh, for the next week and a half or so. And uh, so all the graduations in our high schools are taking place now. But there's one, there's one graduating senior whose accomplishments are particularly noteworthy. From Pearl River High School, her name is Zoe Michelle Zeccanelli. Zoe, I know this is catching you by surprise, isn't it? But I want you to stand next to me. Because you, once you hear the accomplishments of this young lady, you're going to choke up like I'm choking up right now. Zoe is the daughter of one of our members of Team Tammany, Mr. Danny Zeccanelli, and his wife Jennifer, and your brother, Daniel. Daniel. Oh, yes. No, but, okay. <laughs> but, uh, Daniel. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. No, okay. <laughs> So here are a few of her achievements. She's, a gradu she's graduating in the top five of her class and maintained a 4.0 honor roll for all four years. She's a member of the President's National Honor Society. She's receiving a Gold Status Community Service Diploma. She's a commanding officer of the Pearl River Naval Junior ROTC. She's on the basketball all-state team, top 50 state cross country for three years, the district livestock grand champion. She also played tennis, volleyball, and ran track. <laughs> I'm not finished. <laughs> She's also a talented vocalist that was recognized by the state honor choir with a superior recognition. Sons and daughters of the American Revolution Naval Junior ROTC winner at district and state. She was a recipient of the National Army ROTC four-year scholarship. However, she was appointed to the United States Naval Academy where she was one of 250 students selected from more, from more than 15,000 applicants nationwide. And she will attend the Naval Preparatory School in the fall and plans to graduate in 2029. Congratulations, Zoe. Thank you, Zoe. Okay. Yeah, I did. Sure, Mr. Kugel. Zoe, I had, you know, one of the things that didn't wasn't mentioned is one of the things I, I know about you. Could you tell us about the Zigzags? Um, it's a local band I'm in. <laughs> amazing. You guys do Beatles. You guys do all the oldies. You guys are amazing. Always playing in Pearl River, all the Pearl River events. I've just been so impressed with you guys, how good you guys are. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zoe. Okay, I'm going to sit down in a second, but there is one, one last. Yes, sir. One last thing. And this was approved with uh, Council Chair Laughlin. Uh, last year was the first we produced the State of the Parish video and had the opportunity to present it to the Council last year around this time. We've shown it a few times in public. Before it gets, gets out too much, I wanted the opportunity to show and present this to our Parish Council 
uh, to members of, of the audience and those who are, are watching uh, TV. It was produced by our Department of Public Information, headed by Michael Vincino, and it's about seven, seven or eight minutes, so I ask that you sit back and uh, enjoy the video. Thank you. It's been said, the more things change, the more they stay the same. That's never been truer here in St. Tammany Parish. Through our 214 years, we've seen new neighbors, fresh starts for businesses, life-changing moments, and so much more. The once busy shipbuilding, sawmill, and railroad industries have turned into charming parks, neighborhoods, and established communities. Through all the change, there has always been one constant, the spirit of St. Tammany. We may be divided by rivers, highways, and municipal boundaries, but we are one St. Tammany, unified by our shared values, culture, and spirit. It's no secret that St. Tammany is the best place to live, work, and grow in Louisiana, and we must protect that. Now we turn the page. Since taking office in January 2020, our focus has been on investing in our community's infrastructure, planning for the future, correcting the mistakes of past chapters, and protecting our quality of life. Just like constructing a home, we will build upon that foundation to protect all that we cherish. Last year, we set the standard for investing in our community, a $44 million allocation for projects like Sharp Road in Mandeville, Moonraker Drive in Slidell, Pin Mill Road in Covington, and the Tammany Trace Bridge in Mandeville. In all, there were more than 350 projects ongoing throughout the year to improve our roads, bridges, drainage, and utility systems. Your parish government purchased new equipment to give us access to clear and desnag hard to reach drainage canals, which enhances their drainage efficiency, but also saves millions of tax dollars and time. Among those are clearing of the Bidico Creek in the Madisonville area and the long awaited dredging of the Pearl River Navigational Canal. This year, I'm proud to say that we're building upon that, setting yet another record investment, totally more than $57 million to address our citizens' greatest needs. Infrastructure does not stop at our roads and drainage, but also includes water quality and access to high-speed internet. We're using federal funding to improve our citizens' access to high-speed internet, especially to those with little to no access. The project is expected to give more than a thousand homes and businesses the ability to connect to their loved ones, schools, patients, and customers. My administration leveraged our partnerships with our legislative delegation to address our most pressing needs, one of which was water quality. Our efforts turned into $91 million in engineering and improvements to water systems in both East and West St. Tammany, benefiting tens of thousands of our neighbors. We're also improving our wastewater treatment facilities throughout the parish to expand capabilities to meet the demands of the next generation. We have also invested $26 million in federal funding into 16 projects to protect our coastline from the area around Madisonville Lighthouse, across the shoreline of Lake Pontchartrain, to Slidell, and up to Pearl River. And the Lake Pontchartrain Barrier Project, a project envisioned over 50 years ago to protect Southeast Louisiana and save more than $2 billion annually in damages, is closer than ever before due to our persistence. St. Tammany is a coastal parish, and our decisions will reflect that by advancing projects designed to protect us from tropical weather and restore our coast. Protecting our quality of life isn't only about infrastructure. Planning for generations to come must and will be a top priority. 
our team finished the overhaul of our development code, where we modernized building standards to align with your values. The Parish-Wide Drainage Plan, which assesses our drainage on a parish-wide level for the very first time, is nearing completion, as is the Multimodal Transportation Plan, which has never been done before, and examines areas for new roads and enhances safety on existing ones. There must be a balance of development and growth while we enhance our infrastructure and lay the foundation for a more sustainable future. But our efforts don't stop there. Your dedicated environmental services teams ramped up their efforts, picking up over 230,000 pounds of waste from our community. Your passionate animal services staff welcomed in nearly 4,000 animals and answered more than 3,300 calls for help. Thanks to their hard work, more than 93% of those pets found homes, making our animal team one of the best in the state. Your Health and Human Services team helped more than 4,000 families in need by providing resources and programs. We continue to invest in the Safe Haven campus, providing our region with critical mental health care and programs for our neighbors in need. The Book of St. Tammany continues to be written. Like the spine of a book holds it together, our spirit will continue to bind us as one. Past chapters hold traditions tightly while reminding us of what's valued and what needs to be addressed in future pages. But what will always be the most important is the charming setting and the characters within the pages who set the stage for our future chapters to be written. The employees of St. Tammany, or Team Tammany as we call it, have a life-changing opportunity every day. We provide for and improve the communities in which we live. It's an honor that we all hold close and value deeply. Working together to accomplish these goals is important to us and is a reason why St. Tammany Parish government was named one of the nation's top workplaces by national organizations. Our neighbors and loved ones deserve the very best of us, and that is what they will get. We will stop at nothing to protect our world-class quality of life and invest in our future, one that is rooted in sustainability, keeps us safe, and preserves our family-friendly values. The best is yet to come. All right, the next two items under presentations have been postponed. Um, item number two is gonna be postponed till our August meeting, and um, item number three has been postponed yet to be determined. Um, Mr. Impostato? So I'd like to, I would like to make a motion to move up the off the floor agenda. All right, so we have a motion to take the um, agenda out of order. Do we have a second? second? All right, we have a second from Mr. Burke. Let's vote our machines. The motion is unanimous with one absent. All right, so we're going to move the off the floor items to the first. First item, off the floor, number one, resolution to appoint Mary Burkell as the St. Tammany Parish Council Administrator. Do we need a motion? Mm -hmm. We need I'm a motion. Good. We have a motion from Mr. Impostato and a second from yeah, Mrs. Right. Tanner. Right. Let's vote our machines. Motion is unanimous with one absent. Congratulations, Mary. We need you to start working right now. Yeah. So. <laughs> Punch in. Yeah, you can clock in now. All right. 
Um, item number two, off the floor ordinance, uh, off the floor item number two, ordinance to amend the effective date of the St. Tammany Parish Ordinance Council Series number 23-5339 relative to the renaming and reorganization of the St. Tammany Parish Code of Ordinances Part 2, Unified Development Code. I need a motion to motion. introduce. So motion moved. from Larry and seconded from Mr. Impostato. All right, and that's all we... Second, please. Okay, that completes our off the floor agenda. We can go back to our regular agenda. And Mr. Impostato? I would like to make a motion to move up uh, resolution number four, C-6931. All right, we have a motion to move, to take the rest, to move another item up. Do we have a second? Mr. Burke? Second. Yep. All right, we have a motion and a second to take the agenda out of order. Can Let's vote our machine. The motion is unanimous with one absent. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, for the sake of the audience following along, this is resolution council series number C6931, resolution ordering and calling of a special election to be held in sales tax district number three of the parish of St. Tammany, state of Louisiana to authorize the renewal and rededication of a sales and use tax therein, making application to the state bond commission and providing for other matters in connection therewith. All right, we have a couple of, um, we have one card. Um, Terry Lewis Stevens, would you like to come up? And Ms. Stevens, you'll have three minutes when you get here. Okay, before you start, could you tell me on the last thing that you just adopted, the uh, changing the timetable, the effective date of the um, new UDC, what did you change it to? It'll be August 2nd. August 2nd. It's introduced tonight. It'll be on the agenda next month. Okay. Yeah. So that pushes it out. Oh, yeah, it pushes just one month. That's good. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Um, regarding this, um, I was just hoping you would do a little bit of discussing before I was able to question whether or not this was going to remain on the November ballot because as some of us noticed recently, a couple of us, 7.7% of us only showed up to the last election and that is going to cost a lot of people a lot of money. So I'm urging you to keep this on the November ballot because it's only fair to all of the residents of St. Tammany Parish. And President Cooper and I have already talked about the fact that there will be more information forthcoming, that the public will be able to um, understand, ask questions about, and find out what the tax is for, how it's going to be distributed, what the infrastructure projects are going to be, and that will be very helpful to people like me who love, love, love lots of information. So I thank you in advance for keeping this on the November ballot. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, President Cooper, would you like to say anything for the administration side at this time? Yes, thank you. As you all know, the resolution before you is to uh, call for an election of a renewal and restructuring or rededication of our two cent sales tax. Uh, and time is of the essence. And if it's called tonight, it would be on the November 5th ballot, understanding that that's a large, a large ballot. And uh, earlier this year, when we saw the timetable for addressing this, uh, we still have a, a great need for filling, fulfilling our responsibilities. And after hearing our electorate speak for the past seven years, more or less, that our citizenry wants, wants us to use the funding that we have, the revenue that we have coming in now to meet all of our needs. And this plan 
for the public to vote on on November 5th, should you put it on the ballot, vote to put it on the ballot tonight, will we'll utilize an existing funding source to meet all of our needs. There'll be some restructuring and there'll be some, uh, it'll be an extension of our two cent sales tax to which only has six years left, but in a, for a sales tax that's for, for road, bridge and drainage projects, uh, six years does not allow you to bond your, bond your money for, for large projects. You basically build projects on a yearly basis with the revenue you have. So uh, this will allow us to extend the term for 25 years, which was the term of the original, of the original term and allow to, to rededicate, to use portion for our public safety agencies, which we've sought funding for before. So this is a, a tax equal or a, there's no new tax, no, no, no less of a tax. It's using an existing tax to fulfill all of our needs and it's gonna take unified front from our elected officials, our community leaders, and our citizens to allow us to have a sustainable revenue to fulfill all of our obligations for years to come. Thank you, President Cooper. At this time, I'd like to um, recognize the district attorneys here, and we've been working with his office on this project, and I'd like to let him speak. I'm waiting for my three minutes. <laughs> um, no, it's, this measure is important, and I think the, the critical part that President Cooper pointed out is this measure does not raise taxes at all. That message has been received loud and clear, and it does, it does a critical thing. It expands, I think, what traditional infrastructure means uh, by funding what our mandated expenses are in the parish, um, and the limitations should give comfort to the citizens of the parish that it limits both mandated uh, expenses and public safety. I have, I've heard a few comments on, it's not clear as to what it can be spent on, but mandated expenses is clear and uh, public safety even further restrict it, restricts it. And a third restriction is that it cannot exceed 17% of, of money spent beyond what the original purpose was for. Um, these things are needed. Um, I think public safety is just another form of infrastructure. Um, and I think uh, historically the problem has been in the parish, at least from the taxpayers, is we pay a lot of taxes, you do, but they're stuck in these dedicated fund sources and no one can legally move money around because it was voted a certain way. This gives additional flexibility from this designated fund, but also caps how much can be re-designated and it restricts it again to the mandated expenses and expenses for public safety. I know from our office's perspective, we are prosecuting approximately 450 more felons per year now um, than nine or 10 years ago. And so uh, more perspective, there's 10 divisions of court, eight in St. Tammany, two in Washington Parish. We are prosecuting two additional criminal divisions worth of cases per year uh, with the same uh, allotted slots of um, personnel. And I think all things need to stay ahead as we see our Sheriff's Department build additional stations to keep up with population and additional people moving into the parish. While your crime rate doesn't go up, the total number of people living here, everything goes up with population increase. So we have to stay ahead of it for public safety purposes and uh, I support the measure. Thank you. Thank you. President Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Sims. And I wanted to, to respond to some of the unanswered questions and uh, let our public know, let our citizens know, let our council know that working together, we will identify projects that would benefit from the bonding of this money. Together, we will work to provide projects across our parish that will uh, benefit uh, our citizens. And we will announce those in, in the months to come before the, before the election. And also answer other questions too, is how the money will be spent, how the agencies would be funded, 
and, and to what benefit it would be without raising the existing revenue. Uh, our sales tax is generated not only by our citizens, but it's generated by people who come to St. Tammany Parish, visit St. Tammany, pass through St. Tammany Parish, and, and uh, utilize our, our retail shops, buy gas, go to restaurants, and uh, that sales tax revenue will benef benefit us and it continues to grow as our parish continues to grow, as the needs of our DA's office, our sheriff's department, our judicial system continues to grow. So more details will be coming out, but today is the last day that an election can be called for the November 5th ballot. And we understand that uh, that's a, a, a large ballot, uh, the presidential ballot, and, and it will bring people out to vote. And we're, we're gonna make sure that our citizens understand uh, how important it is to maintain the two cents sales tax that we have to meet all of our needs. All right, thank you. Mr. Kugel? Uh, thank you. So I, either uh, Emily or Mr. Collin, uh, Minister Sims can answer this. I, I know we, we keep saying this, but I know that's gonna be the biggest issue that the, the citizens have. This is not a tax increase and it just allows flexibility in how money can be spent for mandated expenses. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that's it's correct. It's just an extension, okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Rowling. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, basically I'm in favor of this um, renewal and calling this election. I think the only thing I would ask the administration to do is do a really, really good job in educating the public. I think history serves that some maybe administrations in the past or just officials in the past have maybe not explained it very well to the public, give those outlets give those outlets to the public to come out and hear what this is about, and I think we'll be very successful on it. So I would just ask that we committed to do that. I mean, yes, us as elected officials would be out there talking to our constituents, but so many times over the past years when we've had any type of tax um, renewals or questions over the last years, you know, a lot of people are very confused on it. And sometimes when they go to the polls, they vote no because they're just confused and not understanding it. So again, that the only thing I would ask is that we just really educate the public and have those outlets to do it. And we do have a great system at St. Tammany with the um, media, with our videos that we show, Facebook, et cetera, and to really get the word out. Thank you. Mr. Phillips. Uh, just for clarification, this funding would be available next year, January, starting in January, right? Yes. It wouldn't wait six years. It would be... Okay. Yeah, it goes into effect immediately. Mrs. Tanner? Thank you. Uh, one thing that I would like to point out, although this proposition reads that it can go up to 17% for the mandated public safety, that does not mean that each year they will get 17%. They will have to present a budget to this council and the council each year will go over it. It may be 15% one year, it may be 14%, but it's not in stone that it will be 17% each year. It can go up to 17%. And I think that is one thing that I like about it, that it doesn't just say, okay, here you get 17% of this money each year. There will be a policy and a budgeting process in place, and I think that's very good. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Impostato? I just know there was some uh, minor restructuring, no substantive changes. I wanted to make a motion on that. I don't know if we wanted bond council to come up and explain it. Grant Schluter with Foley Udell Bond Council. The changes that you have before you are not substantive in nature. Uh, they were requested by the State Bond Commission this afternoon um, to clarify, clarify some language in the proposition. And again, they are not substantive. The uh, requested changes come from the Secretary of State. They were comp uh, conveyed to the State Bond Commission and given to me this afternoon. They uh, rearranged some of the wording, uh, but did not really change it in the proposition, and the title was slightly modified also. All right, thank you. So I have a motion. All right, so we have a motion to substitute. substitute. Yeah, oh, sorry, Mr. Um, Smith. <laughs> Grant, Grant, if oh, you will. There you are, over there. Oh, let's not forget about part 
B to this resolution is the 25 year extension, which gives us a much better position from leverage going out seeking funds for as President, like President Cooper said, for large projects, big projects throughout the parish. Uh, right now with the termination of the existing, um, being what, five years? Was it 2031 or something? Yeah, 31, correct. right? It doesn't give us the leverage that we would have by having this extension. That Could is, you elaborate on that, that is, please? That is, uh, that is correct. Uh, when we renewed this in 2005, uh, then we had sufficient time to issue bonds for uh, roads, bridges, and drainage uh, projects across the parish. But as we near the end of the term for that tax, that severely restricts your ability to do that. And you're generally uh, limited now to doing pay-as-you-go projects to the extent you're able to. Yeah. So in a sense, this we can multiply this money in a sense that we can. Absolutely. Excellent. Um, all right. So we have a motion for a substitute. Do we have a second? I second. Second by um, Mrs. Tanner. All right. So this is voting just on the substitution. The motion yeah. is unanimous with one absent. Mm -hmm. And um, if I could take a moment of personal privilege before we vote, we do have another um, official in the in the chambers tonight. We have our um, clerk of court elect, um, Ms. Russo. I'd like to give her a second to stand up and uh, invite her to speak as she would like. Good evening, Parish Council and Parish President and everybody else that's come to this meeting. I'm sorry I wasn't prepared to speak tonight. Um, I was asked if I did want to say something about the tax that was just, or the renewal that was just spoke about. Um, as a p former parish employee for the district attorney's office and having watched the renewal that came up three times or the tax that came up three times, I am definitely in favor of the rededication of the, the tax. Um, along with, I'm not familiar with the exact language of this tax, but I do know the issue that the parish has had with the rededication and the issue with it being basically how I was educated, it's in silos. Um, and the parish cannot use the money to put it in other areas and use it for other funding. Therefore, the district attorney's office and the criminal, criminal justice system was not able to be supported with the dedicated taxes that were contained in the silos. And from my understanding of this, this tax, it would allow the criminal justice system to be funded. So it's gonna be pertinent for us to educate the public to let them know that we need to um, support the criminal justice system along with the clerk's office, the district attorney's office, and the sheriff's office by the rededication of this tax. So yes, the clerk's office will be in support of this. One other thing is that with this last election, I did have the opportunity to be a commissioner, and um, it was a very great experience. And I will go with Ms. Stevens's um, accurate depiction of the last election. There were only 15 people that turned out for our election. So it is not only crucial to educate, it is crucial to get the people out, because when we do have elections, when we do not have the turnout, it is definitely um, money that is wasted. So thank you so much for this opportunity and y'all have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Okay, um, seeing no other lights from the council, can we get a motion to uh, move on this? Yes, Mr. Impostato and Mrs. Uh, Miss O'Brien. All right, please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with one absent. All right, now we're taking the agenda back in order. Um, under appointments, item number one, resolution to appoint six members to the St. Tammany Parish Library Board of Control and assign staggered terms as required by Louisiana Revised Statute 25214B. Mrs. Tanner, we have a motion. Okay. All right, we're gonna start off with the cards from the public. 
Terry Lewis Stevens. Ready? Yes, ma'am. This is the un unhappy part of the evening, sadly. Um, what I'm going to encourage you to do is to look at the fact that two measures were brought before the state legislature this week, a Bill 777 and a Bill 946. 946 was the, the most important of the two, and this is how it applies to tonight. What that bill tried to do was the same thing that House Bill 25 tried to do last year, which was to give the parish council the ability to remove appointed, duly appointed members of a committee without cause. What you'll be doing tonight by using this very contrived and very arbitrary and capricious measure, the staggering, the, the contrived staggering, I understand that it was dredged out of some particular um, legislative action somewhere along the line and I want this library issue, the library drama, let's call it, to go away as much as anybody else in this room. There's so many more important things for us to be doing than this. This needs to go away. What was brought up in committee, you can all watch it, it was recorded, regarding the 777 bill was the fact that the committee members recognized and they brought up to the people who brought these bills forward, these two bills forward, that there wasn't a library problem anywhere in the state before 2021 when this issue came to us from, prime, from uh, came to St. Tammany from Lafayette, from a particular person, it was marched on in and it has become a thorn in everyone's side ever since. There are books people don't like in every library. There are books everywhere people don't like. You don't have to read them. Young kids don't read those books because they're not in the children's section and it's incumbent upon parents to attend, li to uh, accompany them to the library. Kids under 10, you have to go with your children. So if you're not parenting, that's your own fault. So all I'm gonna say regarding the members, the appointments is you will be doing a disservice if you do not reappoint, reappoint or leave standing the members who were on the committee who did their jobs, who had no reason to be removed. It is not fair, it's not just, and I would argue it isn't legal and per the fact that that bill did not go through the other day, 946, it's not legal because there was no cause, there is no cause, and it's unfair. If you go back, all of you or lots of you didn't go to those meetings like I did, and I don't even have a library card. I went to those meetings to find out what's going on. Those members did what the law required. They did it fairly, and I think they're all Republicans. So it was unfair of you. It would be not to reappoint those people tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Joan Simon. Ms. Joan. Good evening. For the record, you're making an important decision tonight on the health of our excellent library system. Unfortunately, a wholesale removal without cause of four duly appointed seated LBOC members has already occurred. These people have been following the law, have the institutional knowledge, understanding, and willingness to do the hard work of this highly demanding volunteer job. And I've been to almost every doggone meeting and it, there's a lot of work. Those, that, those people who apply just to resist might be very disappointed if they get selected tonight to find out all the work they have to do. Tonight, this council has the opportunity to do the right thing. I ask you to please appoint these four duly seated LBOC members and make a fair and balanced decision on the remaining two. And as Terry mentioned, you know what happened yesterday in Baton Rouge with Mr. Hollis's HB 25 changed over to another bill, both killed in committee for the same reason. Rather than taking the extremely questionable legal advice of Mr. Kugel, might it have been wiser to listen to the response of Mr. Bolner at the last LBOC meeting. Now, I had uh, a little drive to let you listen to it, but it didn't work out for tonight, so I just wanted to read you the transcript. 
of what was said. From Bill McHugh, he questioned, do you believe that the current library board members are serving illegally as claimed by Councilman Kugel in his January 27th position paper and at the March council meeting? The response from Mr. Bolner was, we do not. We have researched that issue and reviewed attorney general opinions and looked very carefully at that allegation and we do not believe that the board members are serving, serving illegally. This all appears to be a solution in search of a problem, a problem that did not and does not exist. I ask you to rise against the pressure and please do the right thing. Reappoint the four members who have done a superb job. Thank you so much. Thank you, David Ziegler. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I so appreciate. I'm David Ziegler. I represent the Slidell Ministers Association. Just want to thank you, Mr. Laughlin, for being bold and remaining on the parish council and being willing to address this issue after two years. And now here we are again. Also want to thank the new, uh, newly appointed parish members that seem to really care about our, our parish, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Impostado, Mr. Burke. Mr. Kugel, thank you for making your stand and for being willing to be outspoken about this situation. This is not about anything but morality. And I want to thank that, uh, Mr. President uh, Cooper for that film that we just watched. That mainly was about infrastructure in our parish. It was a wonderful film. But we're talking about the subject of morality and children and First Amendment rights and things. But children don't even understand what amendments are. They need to be protected. And we'll see what takes place tonight with your votes because it's our children that are the most important. And uh, we just are grateful for you guys being willing to come, make a stand, and do something that the previous group wasn't willing to address when we first asked for help in this situation. So I trust that as you vote tonight, that you'll look at the candidates, your nominees, the ones that you nominated, and think about our kids. Bottom line, protecting our kids. Thank you. Fran Smith. My name is Fran Smith. This is about protecting the innocence of our children. And Fran, some, can you move the mic down yeah. a little bit? This is about the uh, protecting the, our children's innocence. And though many of you might have something more important to do, this is highly important to many, many mothers, grandmothers, parents, uncles, and aunts in St. Tammany Parish. We are trying to watch over our children. These books are sexually explicit, and whether you know it or not, these books have legs. Because I go on the computer, and I look up to see where these books are in the juvenile section or young adult section, which is either 11 to 18 or 12 to 17. These books are located still in there, I know because I've seen them there. Jack of Hearts and other parts was located in those sections in Mandeville. One of us went and checked it out. So don't tell me that y'all have separated these books because you have not, and that's not correct. And honestly and truly, David Kugel has been trying his best to support the people in his community, and all I see is people giving him grief. I wish Jeff Carbon was doing the same for me. I don't like what's going on in the library and I do not want the same people appointed again because they make the same decisions. They are all of the same mind that think it's okay for our children to read porn. And it is an agenda and don't laugh at me because I've studied this and I know doggone well it is. So you know what? When you make your vote or nominees for these nominees, I hope you realize that and I hope you have studied each and every one of them 
because this is a moral issue. It does matter what our kids read, and it matters who you support, Jeff. You have been aligned with them, the Library Alliance at Kelly LaRocca, Rebecca Taylor, for a long time now. And I really, I, I don't think that that's right. I think you need to look in your heart and know what the right and moral thing to do is. They don't need to learn about heterosexual stuff, homosexuality, transsexual. Leave the kids alone and let them grow up with just a little bit of innocence. Please, please. And I'm a praying woman, and I pray against each and every person that is for this. Thank you. Thank you. Rachel Rhodes. Good evening, and thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Tonight I'm asking you to please keep the current library board and let them finish their terms. St. Tammany Parish is made up of diverse groups of people. We must respect everyone and include everyone. We need a balanced board that can make decisions fairly. The library board should support the view that books. Oh, sorry. Can you try your mic better? Can you hear me? You Do you want me to start over? You can. All right. Tonight, I'm asking you to please keep the current library board and let them finish their terms. St. Tammany Parish is made up of diverse groups of people. We must respect everyone and include everyone. We need a balanced board that can make decisions fairly. The library board should support the view that books and other library resources are provided for the interest, information, and enlightenment of all people of the community. Materials should not be excluded because of the origin, background, or views of those contributing to their creation. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin Marino. Good evening. Uh, Kevin Marino, long -term, lifelong resident of St. Tammany Parish. Uh, tonight I ask you to vote to keep the existing board in place. Uh, and appoint additional moderate forward-looking candidates to the board. The goal that Mr. Kugel has laid out of having staggered terms is continuity in operations. Replacing the entire board is counter to that goal. Under the current board's leadership, proactive measures have been taken to give parents control over their children's access to library content. According to our library director's presentation, nearly two-thirds of parents have adopted, have opted for unrestricted access to all of our library's resources, a testament to the trust and confidence they place in our librarians. While the existing board has worked to serve the diverse needs of our community, they have made many concessions to the vocal minority um, that have called for restrictions. Beyond the new card system they put in place, the board relocated graphic novels behind the circulation desk. They introduced last meeting a new a section to the library called New Adult. They have demonstrated a thoughtful approach to addressing concerns while upholding the principles of intellectual freedom. Furthermore, our award-winning librarian, library director, has tirelessly worked to enhance our library's offerings and pave the way for future growth and prosperity. This election poses a critical junction in our library's future. Some candidates threaten to undermine the progress that has been made by removing the current library director. A previous speaker mentioned that kids don't even know what the First Amendment is. Well, I tell you, if you bring them to the library, they will. Uh, second, the oaths all of you took to be in office and the oaths every new library, candidate, library board candidate will take is to uphold the Constitution. That oath includes protecting the rights of children to receive information. I implore you to support the existing board members. Additionally, I recommend you consider 
moderate, non-extreme board members to elect that will, that will move this library forward into the future. I know we've got a lot of good things coming up in the library. They're, they're working on building a new branch in Lacombe. They're working to bring in new media and makers things, all types of new things. And I think changing up the board drastically will threaten all of that progress that we've made. Thank you. Thank you. Glenn Runyon. Good evening. I've had the pleasure of meeting with several of the council members already. I'm, I'm actually nominated tonight for the board. So I, I know I met with Mr. Corbin, uh, Councilman Corbin, Bender, uh, Burke. I have met uh, previously with uh, Councilman O'Brien. Um, I sent an email out today with a supplement to my resume, and I got some extra copies if y'all didn't have a chance to look at it. So um, uh, basically, I know y'all have gone through a, and, and by the way, I sent, a, uh, I fill out the questionnaire that uh, Councilman Kugel uh, sent out. So I'm uh, <clears throat> really here just to talk about I'm offering my background experience. I've uh, been in St. Tammany Parish since 1978, uh, worked 20 years with uh, McDermott uh, Incorporated in New Orleans, started my own private consulting business about 23 years ago management consulting, do strategic planning, business process improvement, uh, and I've worked with... Talk more into the mic, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and I work with lots of uh, organizations. In addition to that, the supplemental that I've handed out here, extra copies, I've uh, served uh, on boards, uh, nonprofit boards. I was on the Samaritan Center board for five years. I've been on three separate uh, municipal committees with the city of Mandeville. Two of those in particular, the Internal Audit Committee and the Mandeville Financial Oversight Committee. Uh, as recently as 2021, I did a Mandeville, City of Mandeville efficiency study, uh, produced an 80-page report for them, uh, highlighting some improvements they could make in their operations. So what, what I'm offering is uh, my background experience uh, on boards and committees. Uh, I would be uh, interested in looking at, you know, uh, as, as a consultant, I, I talk about three things mainly, structure, discipline, and accountability in terms of how uh, you go about managing uh, organizations. So this would be one area that uh, I think I could bring some uh, improvement in uh, processes, uh, make it more efficient, some of the things. And especially in financial management, um, I've looked at the Library Board of Control audit uh, as well as I went to the uh, budget uh, approval meeting, um, I noticed that there's no meetings that the board has that reviews the uh, external audit with the public. I think that's a mistake. You just talked about uh, rededicating some taxes for parish council and the parish. Uh, I think the citizens deserve to understand uh, what's happening with the uh, audit. Uh, and I would, if I was on the board, I would per personally want us to have a meeting with the public to discuss the uh, Library Board of Control uh, annual audit. Thank you. Thank you. you Dr. Andy Benson. Yeah. Well, good evening. Uh, Dr. Andy Benson, Pearl River, Louisiana. Um, first, there's three names in the current Library Board of Control whose consistent left-wing progressive voting records are widely acknowledged and indisputable. Uh, McHugh, Parr, and Taylor. You vote for them, you own your vote, as we always do. And as always, you'd be your own counsel. Now tonight, we'll find out if this is the night when some elected parish leaders may have a, a political coming out party. Uh, what I wrote and say now is only meant for leaders who consider falling short of their pre-election promises. Leaders who may be tempted to shirk their assurances to protect the innocent kids who use our taxpayer funded, overfunded public libraries. I pray that we have no such flawed leaders. 
Trust this, some persons may spin practiced excuses to cover their failings, all in the name of balance. How can persons balance sanity with insanity, lunacy, or the good with the vile, or great literature with smut for kids? Now, there may be some who arguably might plan to fail to replace this dysfunctional border control with normal, mentally awake, morally straight, people reflective of St. Tammany Parish's morals and expectations, and I pray not. This is the most conservative, safe, law-abiding parish in the state. And for that, it's hats off to somebody. How about hats off to us, the citizens? That's reason number one why people move here. It's the quality of us, your citizens. It has nothing to do with pine trees, it's us. It's why working people will drive an extra 50 miles a day just to live here with us. Now, they may not like everything about it over here, but they feel safe. And their kids get a fair chance to flower in St. Tammany. That's right, their kids get a fair chance to flower and stay alive. That's why so many reasonable people and even dysfunctional people, dysfunctional souls will leave their former holes to come here. It's better, safer than the places elsewhere that bad elected leaders manage to wreck. Now, we may have some leaders that don't look out for us, but maybe I'm mistaken. We will know you tonight if you have any words of indignation, and we also know you by your votes. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa Rustmeyer. Uh, good evening. Thank you for letting us speak. Um, I just start by, by saying there's no porn in the library. I tr we trust our librarians. And this libraries are one of the safest places we have in the parish. If you ask parents, that's what you're going to find out. Um, we've had an unprecedented interest in LVOC positions due to the censorship movement. There has not been as much interest on books and libraries in decades. So we're at a moment that's going to decide much in the coming years. So I was gonna talk about the bill in Baton Rouge, you've all heard that. One of the committee members commented, this bill would make it easier to install board members who want to ban books. It bothers me when one person's ideology can affect an entire parish, she said. Those of us who enjoy the freedom to read in St. Tammany Parish are very concerned about the, the book banning and the imposition of any one viewpoint or moral code. As all of us should be, is a playbook out of, out of the Nazis um, the first book bannings they did were of the Institute for Sexual Research in Berlin where gender fluidity was studied. And so what could happen if we get a board that doesn't respect our right to read and is essentially anti-library? Um, even one person, one political member of this group could be disruptive to what is needed in our parish. And we, can, we only have to look west to Lafayette to see what this could be like. Um, that, that movement began before ours and with a they installed a LBOC members that were moral crusaders that had um, not the interest of the health of the library and serving the community um, as their goal, but they worked with the Citizens for a New Louisiana to denigrate the libraries. Citizens for New Louisiana poured t over $20,000 against the renewal of the Lafayette Library, resulting in a loss of share of the millage um, and the results are that there's a hostile work environment. Four, they've had four directors in five years. Only nine librarians since 2015 have remained, resulting in supervising librarians having less than one year experience of, and a loss of institutional knowledge. Police arrest citizens at LBOC meetings. There are lawsuits for meeting violations. And along with the loss of the millage back a, a couple years ago, also lost they turned down a program grant. Um, they have branches reducing hours. They have maintenance that is not kept up. Procrastination disruption to the building of a new needed and promised library branch. The Library Board of Control operatives backed off the promise for a new branch, creating delay after delay. I know we all want folks to think of this parish, like the video, uh, the attractive place for new families a magnet for professional talent for businesses. However, it takes many pieces, and the library is part of that. 
we can start by allowing the current board members, we can start with this integrity of allowing the current board members to serve their agreed upon terms. Thank, Thank you. you. Camille Thompson. Um, first of all, I'm really glad that this is the National Day of Prayer because I hope that people are thinking before they do their votes tonight. Um, I also want to thank David Kugel for his leadership in this, um, this effort that we have to protect our children. I want to also thank Pat Burks, Joe Impostado, Arthur Laughlin, and Pat Phillips for their help. And Lord, um, just help us. We need to make a good decision here. You know, there's been a, a lot of talk about, people talk about kids need to have rights and for, they talk about freedom of people to come in the library and read just any old thing. You know, you can distort those words. Um, there's a responsibility that comes with liberty. Um, what if you had people that wanted to have, write books or buy books about making bombs or how to murder people? Are we gonna be buying some of those books to keep people happy? Are kids supposed to be exposed to those kind of books? How has come we have um, age limits on when people can drive, people can buy cigarettes, people can buy alcohol, what you put in your mind is more important than even what you put in your body. These children are going to live in eternity, one place or another. And God gives people adults. I mean, he doesn't just let kids be born and grow up all by themselves. If, if they were able to do it, he would. But he gives parents, he gives adults to watch over them and to guide them. So we need to be responsible. Why are we wanting to think of putting public money on this filth and smut for our children? That's like buying poison and feeding it to them. We need to do the right thing. We need board members, new board members, for the most part. I think Ann Shaw is acceptable, and we would be glad to keep her. The other ones, I've sent emails to every one of you. Um, these people have been vetted carefully. We have a conservative community here. Let's get some moral and conservative common sense people in here to do the right thing for our children. Thanks. Thank you. Chad Cochran. Chad Cochran. Is that on? Yes, sir. Good evening. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to as a community to share our thoughts on this issue. I'm Pastor Chad Cochran of Generations Church here in the St. Tammany Parish area. I have hundreds of members of our church who live in, all across the eastern St. Tammany Parish, and I promise you are watching how you vote on this issue. And uh, if you do not decide this, to vote on this issue on the side of morality and protecting our children, I promise you it will be an issue in the next election cycle. I'm asking you to vote your conscience with, before God and to put in place people who will protect our children all the noise surrounding this issue, there is one indisputable fact that this present library board has used our taxpayer funds to purchase books and other materials that promote adults committing sex acts with children. There are books containing graphic images, we've all seen it, that they use taxpayer funds to purchase and place on the open library floor where any child can access it. Now, whether it was done out of incompetence or a more sinister agenda, I do not know. I do not pretend to be able to read their minds. But regardless, they have failed at their job to protect the children of our community. If those images were found on my computer at my home, 
the sheriff would be knocking on my door and throwing me in jail for having child pornography. That this board would even be considered, any present member of this board would even be considered for renomination is a slap in the face to the people of our community. And I say shame on any and every one of you who would back them or nominate them going forward to participate on this board. They do not deserve any special consideration. They have failed at their job. And we are asking you to appoint good people to this, moral people to this board who will protect our children. And if you do not, I promise you, it will be noticed and we will raise this issue again come election cycle. And for you guys in Eastern St. Tammany Parish, I promise you this, you're being put on notice tonight. Thank you. Johanna Minor. Johanna Minor. Joanne, oh, there she is. Please don't start my time yet. Um, I agree with, I'm ready. I agree with Pastor Chad Cochran that this is egregious that you would even think of appointing another member who's been there forever. Rebecca Taylor has been there way too long. Bill McHugh is radical as Anthony Parr. We need godly people to be on this board to say no to all of this egregious material coming in from the ALA saying, purchase this book. It's good for the children. It's not good for the children. It's not good for anybody. We, and I'm, I hear all this talk about book banning. We've never banned any book. We've asked that they be put into a private room in the back that if a parent or grandparent wants to allow their child or grandchild to look at this egregious material, that they can ask for it. But we don't need it so our children can go through the library and possibly happenstance upon it and don't think it doesn't happen because it does. I'm telling you right now, if you don't make the right decision tonight in making the right decision on who to put on this board and not put the previous board members because none of them Obviously, it's been shown over the last two years care about our children. So why would you want to put them back on the board? That's just ridiculous. We need godly people to be appointed to this new board to make a difference in our parish who loves our children. We care about all the children, not just one type of child not just one race. We're not a racist community. We love all children. So do the right thing, make the right decision, and know that you will be doing the right thing and you will have peace and you'll be able to sleep tonight. Otherwise, I'm not sure if y'all will be able to sleep tonight. And I hope and pray that Mike Cooper makes the right decision on the right parish council member to appoint to this board, because if we get a radical, we're in big trouble. Thank you. Rebecca Baum. Hi, 
Hi. So I had something prepared, but first off, I'm going to tell you all some facts that have just been misstating. Ms. Baum, put the mic oh. closer to you. There Dr. You go. Baum, but okay. Oh, I apologize, Dr. Yes, Baum. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Worked hard for that. But anyway, so the LBOC that was elected right now didn't pick out these books that were in question. So they're not at fault for the books that are in our library collection, number one. So some people acted like the LBOC current members have selected these books. They, many have been in the library for decades. Myth number one we needed to dispel. Number two, I've been to the library myself. I've been to most of the LBOC meetings and after, I don't know, one a few times ago, because I'll be honest, they moved some books that had nothing sexually explicit that talked about puberty, which I feel is important for kids. One talked that the sperm met the egg, but they didn't tell how that happened. You had to leave that to your imagination. But they moved those to the adult nonfiction, and they moved them. I went and checked. That book, Flamer, that got a lot of flack, it is in the adult section now, as the librarian said it would be. So maybe they're going to a different branch. I go to the Mandeville one and then the one by Coffee Rainy. I guess it's called the Causeway branch. The books that I've checked on have been moved. So it kind of upsets me that they're saying they're not moved. At least when I go, they've been moved. Um, and then as Ms. Stevens pointed out, this issue was brought to our parish from Lafayette. These books have been in the library for a long time. I think the percent of the books that are in question is a very small percent of our book collection. I'm not going to put him on the spot since he's here, but I think if there was porn in our library, D.A. Sims would address it. I've met with him. He's a very nice family-oriented man, no-nonsense man. I don't mean that in a bad way. But I think if there was porn there, he would have gotten it out of our library. So I just hope that the current LBOC gets reinstated. I think if they're not, it's going to be a lot of disruption. Two of the members that have been getting called radical up here, I think got and I may be wrong, got appointed even mid when all this started up. Also, I'd like to apologize that Mr. Corbin had to listen to that verbal tirade by someone else because he held a meeting for the whole community to come to to find out the facts. It was a very great presentation. The accountability group was invited to come so they could say what they were still unhappy with. None of them showed up. I don't know, maybe Ms. Phillips couldn't come because it's not allowed in her diversion. Who knows? But I hope that the current four members get reelected. This needs to stop. The laws have these books out of where children can get them, SB7. The library, LBOC right now is going above and beyond. Anything that talks like he touched her breast through the shirt, which is considered sexual space, is getting moved. Children will not be seeing these books in our collection. That's not. That's a lot of lies, and especially on prayer day. Thank you. <laughs> Lyndall O'Brien. Hello, I'm Lyndall Talley O'Brien, and uh, I just wanted to say the video of the uh, of St. Tammany I thought was really good. Uh, it spoke about the family values that we value in in St. Tammany. I would plead with each one of you to vote to protect the innocent children for pornographic books that are in our library where the children can get them. I ask you to vote for um, candidates that support taking the books and putting them in a special section, um, not out on the shelves as they are today. I also um, have observed that David Kugel has not always been treated with respect at these meetings. I would like to remind everyone that Mr. Kugel won his election by a war wide margin. He uh, campaigned on this issue and others, and he is a man of his word. He won his race over an incumbent who served numerous terms. So I ask for some respect for Mr. Kugel and for all of you council members. Um, I, I am a little confused because somebody came, uh, spoke, and said that the library board, something about it being voluntary, volunteer. But um, I know that Ms. LaRocca got a $10,000 raise that was paid for by, the, uh, by us. And so I'm a little confused about that. So anyway, I just pray that you vote 
to for the children. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Donna Benoit. Hello, I'm Donna Benoit. Thank you for letting us have this opportunity to speak. There's been a lot of talk about the radical right infiltrating the Library Board of Control. Well, I have to say that over the past two years, all I see is a radical left bunch running the library. And the reason I believe we should end this, uh, start with a whole new slate of nominees, although I am sure I think would be okay, but a whole new slate is because there's been talk about uh, at the last meeting about um, members being staggered but not changed out in other board meetings. However, I don't believe any of the other boards have had the controversy that this library board of control has had. And for that reason, I think 100% it needs to be changed out. I uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. And Kathleen Wiley. Thank you for hearing us tonight. I hope that y'all seriously taking a lot of this drama, it is drama, into consideration. Um, I, too, uh, enjoyed the video. And from that video, I, got, I even got some inspiration because it talked about correct, correcting the mistakes of the past. And that's really what this is about tonight. Because though we are separated by various boundaries, as it also pointed out, this is definitely a divisive issue between us. And though I, I do pray that we can all agree to protect the innocence. I think we can, in that statement, say, but then the question is, where is the innocence? And um, as long as we're talking about truth, hope I have a minute, um, I hear a lot of untruth from what I consider the left. I guess I'd be considered the right, but I'll, we're all citizens. We're all created in the, in the image of our creator. But we're, we are all people, and I'd like to come to an agreement with you all, and I think you all are pursuing knowledge as well, but the thing about the separation of church and state, which is very pertinent for this evening, because he talked about serving his constituents, Thomas Jefferson, namely, and he was talking to, in his last letter, to the Danbury Baptist Church. Please go look it up, you and your friends, and I hope Ms. Segura does, because I know she, she likes to talk about that a lot. But Thomas Jefferson was agreeing that he wanted to he said, in, in pursuit, in zealous pursuit of the interests of my constituents in a pro, 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 proportion as they are persuaded in my fidelity to those duties. You'll have fidelity to your duties. And discharge them becomes more and more pleasing. So I hope you all can please your constituents because that's what it's all about. Jefferson talked about believing with you, this Baptist preacher. He's believing with you that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God that owes account to none other for his faith, none other than God, for his faith and his worship, that the legitimate powers, and on and on. Y'all can read the rest of it. I hope you do. But we're all made in his image, and we don't all agree on what's right, but eternity is going to be long. And I pray that you all will be able to stand on the right, and in your eternity, you'll see that you, you were voting with the right, because even when we talk about America, we did the pledge. We separated from England because they were, trying, they were trying to put a lot of restrictions on us with taxes, but also our taxes are going to buy smut. I'm the one who got that book that she, the lady referred to, The Jack of Hearts and Many Parts. And when you're telling a child from the age of 11 through 18, and they are children, I'm sorry, you go talk to their doctor, their pediatrician, they're minors. And then when they're talking about lubing their butt and how to go on grinder and meet adults in hotel rooms, that's porn. It goes into great, great graphic detail of the smut and positions and how to get people. And, and open, opening page, page one, talks about a 4G, an orgy with four people. And these are with high schoolers. So I hope y'all consider protecting the innocent. Thanks. Thank you. All right, that concludes our public comment. I'm going to close. Oh, we have. All right. Yeah, okay. Let me. F All right, you can come up next, and that'll be the last two. Okay. Come up, Miss. Thank you. My name is <clears throat> Anita Gamble, and I live in Mandeville, and uh, I use the Mandeville Branch Library. 
I uh, just want to say that I think I've been to many of the Board of Control meetings for the library over the past two years, and an interesting thing has happened. It used to be that there were a lot of people yelling about children, or yelling, talking about children's innocence there, and suddenly they all disappeared. And why was that? That was because they were quietly working to fill the parish here with people that were for this movement. And I, that, that is why we have the problem we have today. It has nothing to do with library books. Um, the books themselves have been vetted by people that are professional and had education and <clears throat> follow the mandates of the librarians across the country. Um, and I think that to try to just put people in the, the, their board who might not have that kind of experience, who, who just care about this one issue about children and, and what books they're looking at, whereas I believe that this whole issue should be in the hands of parents they should be the ones that decide what books the children see. And I would hate for one of you to tell me that one of my grandchildren could not read a particular book that they might need. What if it turns out that my grandchild is gay? What if it turns out they have a mental health issue? What if it turns out that they need information on a particular subject and they can't get to it? Well. That's crazy. I would help them get this information that they needed if they needed it. Their parents would help them with this. Their parents who are Catholic, who naturally believe they're, they want to protect their children, but they should be the ones that, to make the decision on whether the children can get these books or not. And uh, my children have decided they, they, even though they're Catholic, their children have unrestricted library cards. Why? They trust their children. They trust their children to come and talk to them if they have an issue about something. And I think that just trying to dispense with the whole board illegally, as we have found out, uh, and you're, replace You're them. out of time, miss. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Miss Diane, I found your card. Oh. Okay, thank you for having me. And uh, I'm coming to speak. I'm Diane Bruni, come from the far reaches of Oak Harbor, Jerry Bender's territory. I'm coming to speak before you, this council, to petition you that you will vote for the people who represent our community values and moral standards. I just recently heard a presentation from a woman who works with child sex trafficking and prostitution with an organization called Free NOLA. Uh, from what I learned from that presentation, I now believe that St. Tammany Parish Library System is now participating in child exploitation. This is a very grievous situation because the literature that is being bought and put into the shelves in this parish library system is a precursor to promulgating and supporting present and future deviant behavior. The type of material, this type of material lays the foundation for many acts that are perpetrated and carried out against our children and young adults caught in the web of sex trafficking. It's inconceivable to me that this body of legislative power in this parish will continue to permit these people on the present board to stay in their present positions who choose this material and repeatedly affirm that this material is healthy and enlightening when in fact it is prurient, degrading, and accomplishes the exact opposite of enlightenment. To continue with this present board is to approve of child exploitation. 
I accuse you of this if you allow this to go on. And this, uh, this they're, they're guilty of making these purchases and making it available to the youngest in our parish. I know that children can find this material online and from other sources, but our parish does not have to pay, support, nor keep people in positions of power over the minds and lives of our children who flagrantly resist the will and the standards of our community. I urge you carefully to consider whom you will put on this board and choosing them wisely according to godly values. And let me just say this, there's a famous movie that when these people are choosing the chalice of Christ in the Raiders of the Lost Ark called the Last Crusade, the old knight says, choose wisely. Your eternal life depends on it. Thank you. All right, so that concludes our public comment, closing it to the public, bringing it back to the council. Mr. Kugel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. Um, so we have nine new members, uh, eight of which are here tonight, and we are voting for all six positions on the, which is the entire Library Board of Control. This will determine the course of our library system for the remainder of our term in office and beyond. We had a month to consider all these nominees, and after tonight, if the residents of St. Tammany Parish are happy or not happy with what the library does, they will not blame the Board of Control they will not blame President Cooper as he gets one appointment from this council. They will hold us accountable because we are appointing, by statute, we are the ones appointing all these members to the board. For every single thing the Board of Control after tonight or the library does going forward, we are responsible for that. And I wanna read one thing real quick from uh, an article last year because we know the millage is coming up. It's, it's a bit down the road, it's next May. There was a library bill last year and they interviewed for it the Red River Parish Library Director. And he said the final acceptance or rejection comes down to the voters on whether they continue to fund a library or any organization for that matter. If they don't feel they have a voice, funding and support will rapidly dry up. A good library like a good school system is reflective of a community as a whole and is looked at by prospective residents as well as businesses. I just ask my colleagues to consider this going forward. Uh, Cheryl, you had made a motion, so we need a second. Second. Miss, Mr. Smith. All right, so we have a motion and a second to begin the voting process. Okay, everyone should have their ballot. Mark six. And you can mark up to six people under round one. They'll be tallied and then we will read them aloud to the public. Yes, so um, because of the number of candidates and nominees we had, so if anyone receives no votes in the first round, they're just going to be um, dropped, they're going to be kicked off.
All right, everybody, let's take our seats. All right, everybody's going to be getting their ballot sheets back, and we're going to do a little housekeeping. All right, so we're going to go um, in order. We're going to go in sequential order first, um, starting with District 1. Please turn your, mic on. turn your mics on and read your votes. Mr. Smith, please. Hmm? Yes, they have to read them. Mr. Smith. My votes tonight. Rory Roberts, Anthony Paul, Adeline Rutherford, Charles Branton, Reverend Robert Belknap, and Shaw. Mr. Rowling. Thank you. I'm just going to read the last names. Oscar, uh, Shaw, Belknap, um, Branton, Ruffler, um, Kessler, and Parr. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kaz Mrs. Casmon, if you press your button, please. There you go. Okay. Uh, McHugh, Parr, Sipos, George, Shaw, Taylor. All right. Mrs. Seiden. Georges, Myers, Kessler, Belknap, Shaw, and Runyon. Mr. Phillips. Uh, Georges, Myers, Rutherford, Brenton, Belknap, Shaw, or Belknap, however you say his name. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mrs. Tanner, if you press your mic. Mrs. Tanner. McHugh, Parr, Sipos, George, Kessler, Shaw. All right. And for me, George, Myers, Kessler, Branton, Shaw, and Gilio. Mr. Impostata. Shaw, Belknap, Branton, George's. Parr and Thompson. Mr. Burke. We got Thompson, Myers, Branton, Shaw, Runyon, and Gilio. Mr. Kugel, if you'd press your mic. There you go, sir. Roberts, Thompson, Myers, Rutherford, Branton, Gilio. Ms. O'Brien. Georges, Kessler, Shaw, Runyon, Gilio, and Oster. Mr. Bender. Georges, Kessler, Reverend Belknap, Ann Shaw, Glenn Runyon, and Carol Gilio. Thank you. And Mr. Corbin. Anthony Parr, Pam Georges, Shelby Kramer, Sheila Cork, Ann Shaw, and Carol Gilio. Thank you. And turning it over to the clerk. Did anyone get over eight votes? Oh, sorry. Did anyone get over eight votes? I apologize. Yes, Ann Shaw and Pam Georges. Okay, so um, Ann Shaw, so that's number six. She had 12. And 14. So those are going to be, we can strike those off for the next series and then so they've been appointed in the next round we're going to appoint four people but before that we need to take some um we're going to just identify people by their number and they're going to be um eliminated they got no votes. because they did not receive any votes and those are number 16 number 16 number 17 number 17 and number 20 and number 20. All right. So I'd ask uh, my fellow councilmen and councilwomen to please vote in round two for four people. Um, so do you want the counts of the ones who did win? Okay. So 
All right, so I'm going to um, ask by, the. By number. We're going to have the clerk do it by number. Is that okay for you? Sure. All right. Madam Clerk. Number one had two votes. <clears throat> number two had two. Number three had three. Number four had six. Number five had two. Number six had nine. Number seven had five. Number eight had one. Number nine had six. Number 10 had four. Number 11 had seven. Number 12 had one. Number 13 had five. Number 14 had 12. Number 15 had four. 16 and 17 had zero. 18 had six. Number 19 had one. Number 20 had zero. And number 21 had two. All right, and so now we're, 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 going, we're tasked with voting for four.
well, everyone's going to have to read the books again. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to read off the um, our votes for um, round two, and we're just going to go by we're going to go in reverse order, and we're going to go by last name only. Mr. Corbin, Parr, Kessler, Belknap, Gilio. Thank you, Mr. Bender. Oh wait, press your button, sir. There you go, sir. Paul Kessler, Reverend Beltnap, uh, Gilio. Thank you, sir. Ms. O'Brien. Myers, Kessler, Runyon, Gilio. Mr. Kugel. Thompson, Myers, Branton, Gilio. Mr. Burke. Thompson, Myers, Branton, Gilio. Mr. Impostato. Belknap, Branton, Myers, Georges. Thank you. For me, oh, wait, 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 wait. All right, Mr. Wait, turn your mic on again, please. I got it, see if we can hear you. All right, your correction? Thompson. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> For me, it was Myers, Kessler, Branton, Gilio. Mrs. Tanner. Uh, Parr, Kessler, Reverend Big, Big Nap, if I said it right, and Gilio. Thank you. Mr. Phillips. Myers, Rutherford, Brandon, Belknap. Mrs. Seiden. Myers. Kessler, Belknap, and Runyon. Ms. Mrs. Casavon, press your button, please. Thank you. Uh, McHugh, Parr, Sipos, Kessler. Thank you. Mr. Rowling. Oster, Branton, Rutherford, and Parr. Mr. Smith. Belknap, Branton. Roberts and Paul. Okay. All right, we're gonna get the count now. <coughs> Madam Clerk, if you would give us the results. Do you wanna say it by last name? Yeah, just by last name instead of by number. Gotcha. Roberts had one, McHugh, one, Thompson, three, Par six, Terry Sipos one, Myers seven, Kramer zero, Kessler seven, Rutherford two, Branton seven, Cork zero, Belknap seven, Shaw zero. Well, she was she was off for that one, yeah. My bad. Runyon, two. Who was the other one? Gilio. Gilio, number 18. Gilio, seven. Okay. Oster, one. And Taylor, zero. Taylor, zero. All right, so for house, so unfortunately no one won this round, so we're going to have to vote again into round three. And again, we're going to have to vote for four people. However, uh, number eight, is going to be eliminated. Uh, 12, I'll give you names in a second. 12 and 19. Okay, that's Kramer, Cork, and Taylor. All right, so now for round three, remember we're doing four people.
<laughs> All right, everybody, take your seats. Where's my sheet? Do y'all have mine? Oh, thank you. All right, we're going to go in regular order. Mr. Smith. Okay, third round. Bel Belknap, Kessler, Myers, Parr. Mr. Rowling. Um, let's see, Parr, Kessler, Branton, and Belknap. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Casabon. Parr, Myers, Kessler, Belknap. Thank you. And Ms. Mrs. Seiden? Myers, Kessler, Belknap, and Gilead. Thank you. Mr. Phillips? Uh, Myers, Rutherford, Branton, and Reverend Belknap. Thank you. Mrs. Tanner? Uh, Parr, Kessler, Belknap, and Gilead. Thank you. Um, for me, it was Myers, Kessler, Branton, and Belknap. Mr. Impostato? Myers, Branton, Beltnap, and Gilio. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Mr. Burke? Myers, Kessler, Branton, and Gilio. Mr. Kugel? Myers, Rutherford, Branton, Gilio. Ms. O'Brien? Myers, Kessler, Beltnap, Gilio. Mr. Bender? Parr, Kessler, Reverend Belknap, and Gilio. Thank you. And Mr. Corbin. Uh, Parr, Kessler, Belknap, and Gilio. Thank you. All right, Madam Clerk. Roberts had zero. McHugh had zero. Thompson had zero. Parr had six. Terry Sipos had zero. Myers had nine. Kessler had 10. Rutherford had two. Branton had six. Reverend Belknap had 11. Yes. Runyon had zero. Gilio had eight. And Oster had zero. So we have elected a slate. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's confirm who have the six that have been um, voted on. Pam Georges. Uh, Tamara Myers, Jill Kessler, Robert Belknap, Carol Gilio, and a Miss Owen oh, Ann Shaw. All right, so we have our new Library Board of Control. All right, now I will. We need a um, we need a vote a, um, a motion and a second to vote this slate in. All right, we have a motion from Mrs. Tanner, second from Mr. Smith. When the clerk's ready, let's vote our machines. Yep. Oh, sorry. Yep. Yeah, I'm waiting on two more, one more vote. We got one more vote outstanding. Everybody check your machines. That motion is unanimous with one absent. All right. Um, Pam Georges. No. Tamara Myers. Jill Kessler. Robert Belknap. Ann Shaw. Carol Gilio. Huh? Wait, what? Oh, have somebody. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sarah, we're going to ask you for a favor. You want it? 
Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Okay, come up. All right. Pam Georges. Three years. Tamara Myers. Four years. Jill Kessler. One year. Robert Belknap. You have two? One year. Ann Shaw. Five years. And Carol Gillio. Two years. We have a staggered Library Board of Control. Thank you very much. Okay, I've been asked for um, a couple minutes. We'll do a five minute recess. We was just on a recess. Me and Ashley was the only break. two working. I know, so take a break. Yes, I did.
All right, y'all, good evening. We're gonna get started again. So if you would, take your seats. We do have some other good stuff on the agenda tonight. Item number two under appointments, resolution to appoint to the Planning and Zoning Commission the nine members who received the most affirmative votes at the April 4th, 2004 council meeting. Mr. Dave Doherty, John Gaines, Ben Martino, Pat Milligan, Garen Narcisse, Tom Seeger, Robert Trancoso, Philip Truxillo, and Fritz Walker, parish wide. We have a, uh, a motion and a second. All right, please identify yourselves. Corbin and Impostata. All right, please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number three, resolution to appoint to the St. Tammany Parish Board of Zoning Adjustments, the four members who received the most affirmative votes at the April 4th, 2024 council meeting. Michael Blanche, Blosh, thank you. Christy Thomas, Ron Glockner, and Shana Tranchant. Tranchant, parish wide. Uh, Binder and O'Brien. Did Katrina reassign them terms last time, right? Yes. All right. And these members have been assigned terms. The previous, uh, the, just for those paying attention, the previous ones were uh, served concurrently with the council. All right, everybody make sure you vote. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number four, resolution to reappoint Willie Richardson Jr., Lacey Sharp, Andrew Mendheim, and James Rogers to the Board of Commissioners for the St. Tammany Parish Recreation District number 12. All right, Tanner and Rowling. And we need to stagger these. Everybody vote your machines. All right, Joe, you want to pull and I'll call? The motion is unanimous with two absent. All right, you ready for the stagger? Yes. Richardson. Richardson. One. One. Lacey Sharp. Two. Two. Andrew Mendham. Five. Five. And James Rogers. All right, you got that? Mm -hmm. All right, item number five, resolution to reappoint Wayne Espat, Michael Arenol, Emily Enriquez, Emil Enriquez, Timothy Asher to the Board of Commissioners for the St. Tammany Parish Drainage District number four. These are also staggered five-year five terms. All right, we need a motion and a second. Mrs. Tanner, second Mr. Impostato. Please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Vice Chair Pistotta, you ready to stagger? All right. Wayne Espat? One. One. Michael Arenol? Two. Two. Emil Enriquez? Five. Five. Timothy Asher? Three. Three. You <laughs> Item number six, resolution to reappoint Floyd Trasher to the Board of Commissioners for the Fire Protection District number 11. Mr. Kugel, do we have a second? Mr. Burke, please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with two absent. All right, and this one does not need a stagger. Item number seven, resolution to reappoint Mr. Jer Councilman Jerry Bender to the board, the Board of Commissioners for the Hospital Services District Number Two, Slidell Memorial Hospital Appointing Authority. All right, Mr. Um, Impostato and Mr. Burke, Mr. Bender. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just for my colleagues and the public's sake, okay. Um, the way this is read is perfectly fine, except it could be misconstrued. Okay, so. The around 2000, 
the Senator Shedler changed to where there's a nominating authority who nominates people to the Hospital Services District 2 and 1, okay? Then there's an appointing authority for Hospital Service District 2 who then interviews those people. It's made up of our state Senator Bob Owen, our state rep Stephanie Brault, a member of the council. If you vote for me, I appreciate it myself. The mayor has an appointment and then we have citizens from the different wards. That's who then goes and becomes <laughs> board of commissioners. So it's it, not to be misunderstood, I'm not on the board of commissioners, okay? Just the appointing of a board of commissioners. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bender. Um, let's vote our machines. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss uh, number eight, resolution to appoint Al Hamway and Jennifer Bondio to fill vacant seats on the Board of Commissioners for the Community Action Agency Advisory Board. Um, Mrs. O'Brien, Ms. need a second? second. Mrs. Uh, Seiden? I have a note on you. I'm sorry? Have a note, but they want to add a note first. Okay, and we have an addition, mm -hmm. um, and this, there's an extra spot, right? Yeah. Okay, there, this is gonna be, there's another request by the board to appoint Dave Merez to replace a member that has resigned. So we're gonna need, um, prior to voting, we're gonna need a motion to amend to add Mr. Merez if we want, and then um, vote on that, and then we can vote to appoint them all. Okay, so Mr. Impostato and uh, Mr. Corbin. So let's vote. This is for the amendment. Has everybody voted? That motion is unanimous with two absent. All right, now I need a motion and a second. Mr. Corbin and Mr. Rowling. All right, let's vote our machines again. <clears throat> missing one. We're missing one, y'all. Check your machines. All right, I'm gonna end it. Mr. Kugel, what was your vote? With a verbal yay from Mr. Kugel, the motion is unanimous with two absent. Excellent. Moving on now to the consent calendar. So right now we're going to pull item number 16, which is ordinance calendar number 7578. We're going to pull under resolution. We already did that one. Okay, res um, we already did that one. All right, we also have a request from the audience to pull item 7584. Number 22. That's number 22. Under ordinances. Under ordinances. That's under moratoriums. It's the first one. And then we have another one for, um, to pull resolution 6933. That's number six. That's number six under resolutions. Wait, under resolution? Yeah. Oh, that's at the... Resolutions number six. So that's going to be on page number five. Yours is different. So oh, is I'm oh, sorry, never mind. Under resolutions towards the the later page. Yes. Okay, which one did you want to pull up to? It's under adoption. No. Yeah, but that's ordinances Resolute. for adoptions. No. Is it resolution? No, we've already done the resolution. It's an ordinance. It's an ordinance regarding that. Oh, yeah. All right, um, Mr. Imp uh, Mr. Corbin. It's number 27. I'd, like, I'd like to pull number 28. Number. Of ordinances amending the code. Number 28, yes, sir. Yeah. It's number 27 under adoption, not on consent calendar. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll move, we'll move it up after we, before we start pulling, talking about the poll. Okay. 
All right, looking to my um, right, does anybody else want to pull? Mr. Uh, Phillips, did you want to pull something? Okay. Anyone else? Anybody from the administration? Okay. Katrina, could you read off which ones we're going to pull? No? All right, Ma Madam Clerk is going to read off which ones we're going to pull just so we're all on the same page. Under ordinances for introduction number 16, ordinance calendar number 7578, number 22, ordinance calendar number 7584, and number 28, ordinance calendar number 7590. And under resolutions, resolution council series number 6933. That's number six. All right, so now I'd like to um, entertain a motion to adopt the other items on the um, consent calendar. All right, so Mr. Impostato and Ms. O'Brien, please vote your machines. And the motion is unanimous with two absent. Thank you. Mr. Impostato. I'd like to make a motion for bond council to move up item 27, ordinance calendar number 7557. We have a motion to take an item out of order for our bond council. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Smith. Vote your machines. Number 27. Under ordinances for adoption. Under ordinances for adoption, I'm sorry. Last page. All right. And that motion is unanimous with two apps. Thank you all. Item number 27, ordinance calendar number 7557, a fourth supplemental bond ordinance or authorizing the issuance of seven million of taxable utilities revenue bonds, series 2024 of the parish of St. Tammany, state of Louisiana, prescribing the form and certain terms and conditions of said bonds and providing for other matters in connection therewith. Mr. Sluter. Brief. This is a $7 million bond issue to evidence of low interest loan from the state, from the uh, LDEQ. The interest rate is less than 1%. It's 0.95 of 1%. And it is to finance uh, improvements uh, to the sewer portion of the combined water and sewer system of the parish. All right, thank you. Looking to my right, looking to my left. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote your machines. Who was the motion and second? Mr. Impostato and Mr. Corbin. Thank you. And that motion is unanimous with two absent. Have a good evening, sir. Thank you. All right, moving on to the first item pulled from the consent calendar. That is going to be ordinance calendar number 7578, ordinance to amend the 2024 capital improvement budget and capital assets, amendment 21, parish-wide drainage and capital projects. Mr. Phillips. Uh, yes, I was... Uh Hoping to uh, add on to that <clears throat> uh, project to include a ditch from Swallow, Egret, and Partridge, which is part of the bird uh, subdivision of uh, Dove Park. And, uh, but of course, before we get into the amendment, I'd like to hear what Daniel Hill has to say about possibly doing that and the money that might be involved if the administration wants to talk about it. But I, I don't, the intent is not to hold up that project, but possibly add this on down the road to that project. Yeah, I, in my recommendation on it, so Westwood Detention Ponds, I, to me, it's one of the best projects St. Tammany Parish has going on right now. Tall Timbers area, the areas of that area, so they go through some pretty extensive flooding during rain events. So this pond on, say, a 100 year storm event comes through, drops water surface elevations two feet in this area. So it's a, a very beneficial pond from what we have on our end. Um, I, I understand the, re the request about the ditch that was not in the scope 
that the project currently has now, and I, I, I would agree that we, we can investigate that and proceed it, but I would like to do that as a separate standalone project, not as part of this one, just because uh, environmental permitting was required, all of that kind of stuff, all those scopes would change and potentially delay this project. So I, I think it would be better if we proceeded with that as a standalone project. So basically, I'd have to write another ordinance then, or how would that work? Hey, I'd have, for, I guess, I would say, in order for you to write an ordinance, you're going to need a scope detailing what okay. what's going to what it's going to take, um, and you're going to need a cost estimate of, of what an idea of what the cost would be. So I'd have to get that together for you. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. And Mr. Hill, can we keep that in mind so we can like? when you start this other project you know that we're probably going to try to tie in what uh, councilman Phillips would like yes okay perfect thank you anyone else all right mr. Phillips you would like to make a motion to adopt okay yep oh it's just for introduction okay all right thank you Next item to be pulled is under moratorium. We have ordinance calendar number 7584, ordinance to extend for an additional six months the moratorium on the opening of new streets in Angelica States. And we have a card, Mr. Jenkins. Thank you, council, Mr. President. Point of order, all moratorium uh, ordinance are supposed to be pulled per parish ordinance. So the fact that only one got pulled is actually uh, not the way that was supposed to go down. So for the new council, please understand that. I am Bubba Jenkins, chairman of the North Shore Home Builders Association, and I'm a local home builder. I stand here not only representing home builders, but also electricians, plumbers, drywall installers, painters, and more. Tonight, I'm here to advocate for a balanced approach to our housing and development needs in St. Tammany Parish. Our parish has relied extensively on moratoriums over the years, a practice that has become overused to the detriment of our community's growth and inclusivity. The continuous extensions and broad applications of these moratoriums are not just stalling development, but are actively hindering our economic vitality and diversity. Let's consider this. The Alice report of 2023 indicates that 28% of households in our parish are Alice, asset limited, income constrained, employed. These are families who earn above the federal poverty level, but below the basic cost of living due to a high cost of housing, childcare, and transportation. From 2019 to 2021, the number of households below the Alice threshold increased by 6%. This is a direct reflection of the growing economic strain on our citizens, and it's made worse by restricted housing availability due to your continuous moratoriums. These moratoriums not only challenge our economic framework, but also raise concerns under the Fair Housing Act. The act mandates the removal of artificial, arbitrary, and unnecessary barriers to housing. By limiting development, moratoriums restrict affordable housing options, disproportionately affecting those most in need, the very households that Alice statistics highlight. Therefore, I challenge each council member to closely examine the active moratoriums within your districts understand their original purposes and work towards achievable ways to bring them to an end. St. Tammany Parish's approach to housing should not be about creating barriers, but about fostering growth through strategic planning and infrastructure development. Your approach to housing should align with the principles of the Fair Housing Act, ensuring that all citizens have the opportunity to live affordably and comfortably in the communities where they work. St. Tammany Parish must shift its strategy from defaulting to moratoriums to revising them to reflect current needs and opportunities. Thank you for your time and your consideration on these crucial matters. Thank you, sir. All right, I need a motion and a second to introduce. Oh, Mr. Phillips. All right, and Mr. Can I, can I say something? Yes, sir. Press your button, please. There you go. Uh, sir, I'd be happy to meet with you. I'm a new uh, councilman. It's not that I want to stifle growth or, you know, put the housing business out of, or put you out of business or whatever. I realize there's a lot of other jobs along with what you're trying to do, plumbers, carpenters, so on and so forth. So if you want to make an appointment with Daniel or whoever I need to meet with or planning, 
we could get together and talk about what you're trying to do in that angelic estates. And um, Bubba, I'll also do the same because I inherited a bunch of um, ones from um, Reichert. So I'd like to kind of figure out what's going on in my district. All right. Um, we need a, we have a motion and a second. Yeah. All right. Next item is um, item number twenty-eight, ordinance calendar number seven five nine. Oh, Mr. Corbin. Oh, it's, it's for this one. Okay. Yep. Uh, ordinance calendar number 7590, ordinance to amend the code of ordinances of St. Tammany Parish, Louisiana, part one, chapter 35, roads and bridges, article one, in general section 35-35, directional boring operations to add section 3535E, underground facilities damage prevention board. Okay, in reviewing this ordinance, the ordinance really only documents that where the people come from, they're gonna be on the board and how often how they're going to be reelected and what their terms are it doesn't include a purpose an objective or the authorities associated with this board i'd like to I'd make a motion to postpone it until those questions are answered okay we have a motion to postpone do we have a second i'll second mr impostato all right we have a motion and a second please vote the motion is unanimous with two x all right thank you Next item to be pulled is um, under resolutions, item number six, resolution council series number 6933, resolution to confirm all parish council appointed boards and commissions comply with terms of office and staggering of pursu terms pursuant to state law and parish wide ordinances. Council inside? I'm not, um, I, I know it was pulled, it's but I'm not sure who pulled it. Oh, sorry. Uh, Terry Lewis Stevens? Did Terry leave? Okay. And all, all this does is bring us into compliance with all our boards and commissions that haven't been staggered, that legally need to be staggered. That's it. All right. Would you like to make a motion to? Uh, yeah. All right. We need sure a second. Second. second, Mr. Burke. Oh, Mr. Kugel. Yeah, I, I agree with this resolution. I, d I do think we should make a plan to, because it's yeah. by December, like because I think it's like four or five a month. Maybe less, but we just need to have, I think we should have a plan so we'll make sure we get this done by the end of the year. Um, I've already spoken to our new um, council admin. We also have a couple of boards that we need to dissolve just because they no longer meet and things like that. So hopefully we can reduce that number and get it all done by Christmas. All right, so we have a motion and do we have a second from Mr. Burke? Yes. All right, thank you. you all right, please vote. One more. Y'all check your, Joe? Sorry. <laughs> the motion is unanimous with two absent. All right, that concludes our um, consent calendar. Moving on to appeals. I'd like to just say something. Yep, Mr. Impostato. I'd just like to say there was no other moratoriums, Mr. Jenkins. Yeah, just to be clear, there were no other moratoriums on the consent calendar. Yes, yeah. No, no new ones. No new ones. Yeah, on the consent. new ones have to be pulled. The extensions can can stay on consent. Correct, okay. Emily? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's a technicality. Do you understand? So. Gotcha. All right. So um, moving on to appeals. Yes. All right. Appeal number, so each side is allowed 10 minutes to present their case and three minutes for rebuttal. A two minute conclusion per side may be allowed if questions are asked by the council. Appeal number one, Roland Vaughn um, Criminy, appealing the zoning commission denial on February 6, 2024 to rezone 36.85 acres of land, more or less, located on the north side of US Highway 190 and the east and west sides of Pruden Road, west of Penn Mill Road, Covington, from its present A1 to an HC2 and rural overlay. This is in Ward 3, District 3. Martha left, but I have some information. Okay. Are there any cards? No. Oh. No cards. Uh, Ms. Marone is here, may want to speak on this, but I did speak with Ms. Casabon um, mm -hmm. before she had to leave the meeting. And I believe that there have been revisions to this zoning application. So Ms. Casabon would like to have a motion to send this matter back to the zoning commission 
as a council referral based on a new application that's going to be submitted by the applicant. And Mr. Maroon, if you want to speak to that. Yes, thank you. Uh, members of the council, Paul Maroon on behalf of Mr. Simony. Um, we have uh, had a meeting with a lot of the residents in that area uh, through Ms. Casabon. And as a result of some of the comments that were made at the commission and then at the community meeting that we have, we've drastically revised the proposal that, that we originally began with. Because there were so many changes, uh, some of the residents, uh, as well as Ms. Casabon, really felt like we ought to take that new proposal, since it's been modified so much, back to the commission, let them have an opportunity to look at that, make a recommendation, and then if it's necessary to come back to the council after that's been done with the new plan, then, then of course both sides will have that option. But um, we would ask that uh, it please be referred back as a referral uh, so that we can get the new documentation to the staff and the commission can look at this uh, with fresh eyes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Um, Ms. O'Brien, do we have a second? Well, I make a motion oh. to refer it back to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Oh, okay. That's Mrs. O'Brien's motion. Gotcha. So, Mr. Impis Mrs. O'Brien, Mr. Impis All right, please vote your machines. Yes. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number two has been withdrawn. Appeal number three. Center Fire LLC, John T. Campo Jr. appealing the planning and zoning denial on March 5th, 2024 for tentative subdivision approval for the proposed Brewster Place subdivision located on the west line, I'm sorry, on the west of Dummy Line Road, south of Brewster Road, west of LA Highway 1077, south of Interstate 12, Madisonville, Louisiana, Ward 1, District 4, Ms. Seiden. Okay, this is in my district. And um, Mr. Campo is, um, he's appealing the uh, commission's denial. He's and I, um, I do want to turn, yeah. I want to um, make a motion to overturn planning's denial. Um, okay. His tentative plans met all of the requirements. So I think we should overturn the ruling. Okay. And I have a couple of cards from the public. So do you want to open sure. to the yep. public first? Yeah. All right, first up, John Campo. Good evening, council members. My name is John Campo. I'm president of Campo Architects. I'm also a real estate developer and uh, a resident of St. Tammany Parish since 1988. Uh, the project that we're doing is a very small scale uh, zoned A4 residential development that um, has all of the attributes and conformance for A4 zoning. So there's, it's entitled by right. Uh, so we're not asking for any variances. Uh, I'm also a preservationist. And I say that because this particular site has some very uh, unique and gorgeous uh, trees on it. And our plan is not to take those trees away. It's really to incise the main entrance in the cul-de-sac, but not to take out some of these gorgeous specimens um, that are uh, live oak trees and such in there. So I guess that's the preservationist in me. Um, I'm here to answer any of your questions, but I'll, I'll also tell you that uh, in title by right, it's seven acres plus or minus, and A4 allows four per acre. Uh, whenever you take the net area, and our engineer who is here calculated it, it's allowed right now by right to have 21 lots. We've reduced that to 17. Uh, all the lots are uh, fairly large size, and there's also uh, in the uh, back a, a substantial retention pond. So, you know, with that, uh, I respectfully ask for your approval to overturn the denial. Yeah. And I'll answer any questions if you have them. Okay. Let's wait till after the all right, we're going to wait till after everyone's had their, because it's a, this oh, one's. Oh, there's another person. Yeah, okay. time limit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Thank you. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, Randall. Oh, sorry. I apologize. You did not wish to speak. Um, I'm 
Um, Mr. Ch um, Chasson, are you in favor or against? Are y'all in favor or against? Um, I'm okay, well, I'm just going to we group y'all together because y'all have a special amount of time. Um, is there anyone else in favor? Because the in favor side has um, a couple more minutes. No? Okay, if not, I'm going to turn it over to the other side. And just let me know who's going to speak first. So together, y'all have 10 minutes. So, all right. And just identify yourself when you start. Uh, my name is Matthew Cabral. I'm a resident of uh, Fairfield Oaks Subdivision. Um, first and foremost, good afternoon. Thank you for having us here. Um, so I want to start by saying that the reason we're here is because you basically had a board of subject matter experts in planning development agree with some of the concerns that we brought up in the first meeting. Um, we had a, we had addressed several issues, mostly related to drainage, that they agree kind of falls outside of the scope of the normal process of what the planning and, and develop <coughs> sorry the planning and development commission does um, through the tentative and preliminary phases of the development. So so far, I have not really heard anything um, be addressed on addressing these concerns that we have initially brought up. So in that, I would like to kind of go over what we brought up and um, what we're proposing here today. So uh, multiple planning, this was what we discussed at the board, uh, the last uh, planning development uh, board hearing. Multiple planning and development board members shared our concerns on the topic of drainage, and we believe this is the main reason for the denial of the tentative building plan. Some of the topics brought up in this meeting include the following. Multiple subdivisions have been built following this exact same process that we're talking about here today, and they have resulted in either the new or adjacent subdivisions flooding. Ms. McKinnis, oh, I'm sorry, give me one second here. Um, it, I want to note that developers are only required to obtain topography and hydrological reports within this process for their particular developments, and that Ms. McKinnis on the board had pointed out that the studies don't consider or extend outward to pre-existing land and structures in surrounding areas. This is a problem that many in St. Tammany will tell you has resulted in their established homes suddenly flooding after new sub subdivisions have been built. Uh, multiple subdivisions continue to be approved in flood hazardous areas and land deemed to be critical drainage areas by St. Tammany Parish. As science dictates, building homes where water naturally drains, it displaces water and backflows to the grounds that it naturally runs from. When we're talking about mostly flat land area, which in this particular case is what we're discussing, with only several inches of variation between different land plats, this in particular is very risky, especially when new permits are allowing slabs to be 12 inches or more above base flood elevation. It doesn't help that FEMA maps being used currently to determine these, these levels are from 1989. There's a need to have an updated and improved map, uh, you know, issued to the public for, for use here. Um, hundreds of homes have been built along Brewster over the last few decades, and the population in this very small region of St. Tammany has grown over 250%, and that's according to St. Tammany government's own study, which I've included in Exhibit I in the folders that um, I'm not sure if you've uh, obtained yet, but. Um, there's no doubt that the base flood elevations have increased since 1989 as a result of the continuous development in this region and the 250% population growth. Um, with continued housing development outpacing drainage infrastructure by a massive margin, it's absolutely possible that the housing growth is causing more locations to become flood hazard areas, and we might see that on the next FEMA map update, which is, again, what we're concerned about. It wasn't until this hit our backyard or it came into our own backyard that we realized how fast St. Tammany has grown the housing industry without putting focus on public safety, without focusing on what risks are being are introduced as a whole. Um, Mr. Cooper, you know, I, I appreciated everything that I saw this, this evening when we first got here, the video, the improvements, the efforts that you're doing. However, what we are seeing is there are still subdivisions that are coming up. Um, you know, I use Beatico Creek as a, as a primary example. Bidico is multiple hundreds of homes, and after it was developed, it was it flooded several times so far, where people have actually had to be rescued in canoes. They're they're being approved without this greater regional survey, which in this case, even in flood zone C, 
You're, we're seeing um, areas like Springhaven subdivision. When it was built, our, <clears throat> our flooding in our own backyards has risen. We're seeing more standing water on Brewster. I have multiple exhibits that I've included that shows that Brewster itself floods in multiple locations, especially between the Gitz and Paraloo um, regions that we're actually talking about this development being uh, put in. Um, so how does this apply you know, to us and what are we asking to be done? Um, with this current, um, I'm sorry, just give me one second here. With our subdivision being over 25 years old and built in a manner which drains to the west of where this actual subdivision is being placed, there's a natural drainage servitude. When we were built as a neighborhood, and this is the concerns that were also shared by the Planning Development Board to put us here today, we were built to drain off into this region that's being proposed right now. If you look at the plan, the west side of, sub, of our subdivision drains off into what would now be the west side of this subdivision, meaning the entire east side of the subdivision, the newly proposed one, blocks off our drainage path to the servitude. In that exact design plan, there's a, um, there's a retention plan pond, uh, a retention pond planned, which doesn't actually capture what we're concerned about coming from the north all the way to the south side of our property. It also is a retention pond that would have to capture the drainage that comes from uh, Spring Haven, which is to the south of us, a natural stream, which is also included on the maps in the exhibit that I, I've shared, as well as the property that's been standing there for 25, 30 years and capturing all of our water. Um, so again, I go back to the fact that what is being done um, by uh, you know the developers, I appreciate that that's part of the process. What we're really here to address is what's outside of the scope of the process that's not being captured, where the risk is really, you know, not being seen as a whole by the entire within the entire process. So, um, that being said, there is a current overhaul being done of the um, what is it? The planned uh, shoot, the unified development code um, that is still not yet in effect. Um, there is a plan um, for basically the future of uh, uh, gro gro growth through 2040 in the St. Tammany region. What we're asking today is that you take a step back with this proposed subdivision in our area and with what is proposed in here saying, you know, we want more green space in subdivisions. We want to encourage the use of native plants. We want to clarify stormwater runoff construction and management standards for different sites and, and buildings and structures of properties. Um, the things that, we, that are being discussed in here, we wanna wait until those come into effect so we can review things like this before we continue building. We wanna make sure our infrastructure can support the growth that continues to happen. And I haven't even touched on traffic. I haven't even touched on the things that go on in Brewster. It's a very narrow road. I appreciate, again, the efforts. You're paving roads. You're, you're trying. However, we're still seeing traffic 20, 30 minutes at a time backed up. We have two schools in either direction that com continuously back us up 20 minutes to get through an intersection. We, we need to stop the development before we grow infrastructure. And I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so y'all um, y'all side have two more minutes, so anyone opposed want to speak? And just um, let me know who you are when you come up. My name is Greg Kelly. All right, Greg, you have two minutes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll be, I'll be quick. Uh, moved to this neighborhood that we're talking about, uh, Fairfield Oaks, in 2001, January. Been there ever since. I was the second home in the neighborhood. We never had flooding on Brewster, never. And in this last 23, 24 years, now we have flooding on Brewster. When I used to get off the interstate, there was a stop sign there. You didn't have to look. Nobody was there. Now we have a, a light and traffic gets backed up all the way from 1077, a half mile, all right, down Brewster Road. We don't need any more development. I can promise you that. All right. I, I feel bad because I almost bought all of that property right before all this went down. And I, I wish I had. I wish I had and I would have kept it th that way. Right next to this property we're talking about, there are two homes on seven acres. Two homes on seven acres, okay. then the power line, okay. and now they want to put 17 homes on seven and a half acres. I said we already have street flooding during a heavy storm. I shouldn't even say heavy storm. During heavy, just a residential, you know, like sh sh thunderstorm, we have uh, 
residential street flooding. The ditches are full. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of St. Tammany Parish since 1972. Um, and uh, I, I can tell you, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. The traffic is crazy. Brewster Road probably could use a little uh, update and, and widening and what have you. Um, but uh, um, uh, like I'm, I'm not against development, all right? And I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a public servant as well. But um, I think that we need to uh, think about this very much. So uh, if they wanted to develop it where they would have, you know, three or four homes, I want to be against that, but not 17. Thank you, bye. Thank you. All right, Mr. Campo, rebuttal. You have three minutes. <clears throat> yeah, we can during our question times. Yeah, my, my rebuttal is very concise, and that is I'll reiterate that what we are planning is in conformance with the current zoning. We've been sensitive to many of the issues. It's entitled to have 21 lots. We've reduced it to 17. There is a retention pond there to take care of the drainage for the, the development. And really, that's it. I mean, um, I, I don't think I have any more uh, comments, but we'll be happy afterwards to answer any other questions. OK. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd also like to um, alert Mr. Um, Liner to get ready. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, so the other side, y'all have three minutes to rebut. So one thing I want to bring up again about the Unified Development Code is that <clears throat> there's a initiative to be more transparent on the endeavors of you know planning and development. Um, it didn't come to my attention that this was what was happening to this property until we were fortunate enough to have somebody within the St. Tammany Parish government reach out to us and say, hey, did you know this was taking place? Um, if we would have known that the zoning um, activity was taking place back in, I believe, 2020, we would have absolutely stepped forward for the same exact reasons that we're here today. Um, again, I appreciate you know what, what the developer is saying here, <clears throat> but I hope you take into consideration the risk that we've brought up. And again, keep in mind why we are here and that if it was as simple as the developers are saying it was, why it wouldn't have stepped through the process to go through the preliminary phase to get the reports that we're expecting that are in scope. The real risk is what is outside of scope. What I'm asking everyone here today to take into consideration and look at as you go through the unified development code, as you release that in the future to make sure that you are taking, taking care of citizens, pre-existing subdivisions, that you're, you're monitoring a greater scale of land outside of what is proposed within that development scope. That's all. Thank you. One, one more thing. The developer says that there is a, a retention pond back there. There is not a retention pond back there. I have walked every bit of that woods over the last 20 years, all the way from Brewster Road, all the way to Highway 22. I've walked all of that over the years, down that power line, what have you. There is a low area, but it's not a retention pond, I can promise you. The drainage ditch <clears throat> that runs behind the neighborhood, it flows, and it's probably a good four, five feet wide, five, four or five feet deep. It does not flow into that low area, all right? It's near it, but it doesn't flow into it, and it is not a retention pond, I can tell you. I promise you that. All right. This, and I don't know if I'm sure. I'm pretty sure none of y'all have ever been to my neighborhood. And uh, but if you go to the very back, there's a gravel road that accesses one of the uh, St. Tammany Parish um, uh, waste treatment facilities. And that's what we're talking about, right back there. There's a low area, probably about a maybe a half acre, but it's not a retention pond. All right. And uh, I, I can tell you, um, I, I wouldn't be against them developing it with uh, you know a couple of homes, but not 17. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, come on up. Um, hi, I'm Fallon Chesson. Um, I also live in Fairfield Oaks, and I just want to say, just to recap kind of what they're saying, <coughs> is I, yes, it is in scope, but maybe we're talking about the wrong things. This needs to be denied, and then maybe we should talk about rezoning this again, because 
if you took a poll or a survey of anybody that lives in this area, they're going to tell you the exact same thing. Within four days of us realizing this on the last meeting, we put up a petition just in our neighborhood, and it was overwhelming the people that were like, absolutely not. This is a terrible idea. And that was just us doing the citizen thing and not having the outreach that you guys have. So that this is, this is much needed to be just put to bed, not 17 homes. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Councilwoman Side. Thank you. I would love for Mr. Liner to explain where Mr. Campo is <coughs> in this phase of the neighborhood because I think he needs to get to the next phase for you for you to be able to see where his drainage plan is going and what he is designing because he hasn't been able to even get to that phase yet. And I understand your frustration with the drainage and flooding and we should probably have a meeting with your neighborhood to see where your problems are. are um, you know where where you're having problems so anyway i'm gonna let mr liner explain where we are thank, thank you i think you did a great job though just uh -oh. now explaining <laughs> it anyway um so where we are in the process is preliminary excuse me tentative which everybody has spoken about tonight yeah. at tentative we look for just the very minor basic things does it meet the zoning does it need any waivers you know what are the basic parameters of the development and it's pretty much just a layout if that gets approval from the commission, then they move on to preliminary, which then that's when you do your TIA, your hydro study, and everything, all of your engineering to determine whether the development will actually work or not. So right now, for tentative, we're just looking at on paper, doesn't meet the zoning, doesn't meet the criteria to move to the next stage. Again, hydro, TIA, all that's going to be done for preliminary and go back to a public hearing for the uh, planning commission. Then staff will have time to review those engineering products and make recommendations to the commission, good or bad, which let them know what the, what the facts say of the engineering science. So that's where we are right now. Um, I'd also like to plug the UDC. You know, <laughs> we definitely need the, the new UDC to go live. Um, it's been seven years in, in the works. A Couple more months won't be a big deal. We're gonna tweak it, get everything as perfect as can be. However, nothing's perfect. It won't fix the problems we have in the past that are on the ground right now, but it, sh it should and it will help developments moving forward. Even if the UDC was adopted and, and went live in July, this particular development has already been through and started in the process of the current land development code. So we wouldn't even be able to change the rules on them. Um, we're past that point. Yeah. So right now, um, I think they've met all the criteria needed to move into preliminary. He's saying legally that he has the right to build. And so once we get to the next, I know, but once. Wait, wait. It's not a, this so is not a two-way discussion. I'm just trying to explain what Mr. Liner's saying. So we need to get to the next phase and to see where, where all the water will go. And, and we can't get there if we don't overturn this ruling. So. And Mr. Liner, I had a question for you. So if this were to proceed, they would have to, we would, they would have to perform analyses to see if they can improve the drainage on yes. the parcel as developed, meaning it has to be better than it was leaving it just wild land. Yeah, that's correct. And you know, I can also point out that if any time somebody wants to do a public records request and get that engineering document that's submitted to the staff for review and they can have their own, you know, um, person review it and make their own recommendations if they like. Um, that's just part of the process. So Okay. Miss uh, Miss O'Brien? There, I was going to ask about that. <laughs> Sorry. But I did want to ask, is this considered a critical drainage area? I don't know that off the top of my head. Okay, I'd like to know that. Is Daniel available? I can, I'm sure we can find that out pretty quickly. Right now, it's, it's not okay. Oh. What, what, we have a process, and we, we've, we, we gave you all 10 minutes, and then we gave you three minutes to talk. So now this is the council's turn to answer questions. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Corbin? Before Oops, you start, sorry. Mr. Corbin, um, Ms. O'Brien, I just conferred with the engineer for this particular development, and yeah, he I agreed it's not a critical drainage area. Yeah. Okay, All right. thank you. Mr. Mr. Corbin, please press your button again. I turned you off. I'm tired of it. So, Ross, does the, does the, the concern, I've listen, listen, heard the concern being raised, does the old UDC, the one that's currently in place, require this more expansive look as part of that drainage to go make sure that we don't backfill or cause problems for an existing subdivision? Or is it narrowly focused on only this one little area? That I'll actually defer to Daniel on as the engineer. <laughs> Did 
So when a subdivision comes in to it, they submit an engineered plan to us that states that they meet parish requirements. That's no adverse drainage impact to those around them. And Daniel, just to be clear, that is current UDC and future, future UDC. Both. They're yep. both. So a new subdivision cannot do any damage yes. to the people next to them. Correct. Gotcha. All right. And Daniel, how is that? How is that verified? Is that a engineering plans that are turned into our engineering to review? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, Mr. Impostato. Daniel. I'm sorry. Don't. I'm sorry, Dad. You can't leave. Please relax for a second. <laughs> what are their drainage requirements? Is it 25 percent less net runoff for the subdivision? Yeah, it's 25 you explain peak that, runoff please? reduction. Yeah. So you know, as land's developed, your impervious surface increase. You have more runoff from the property. So our requirements require you to detain that runoff, and you reduce the peak flow that would leave the property by 25 percent. And I, I just is a, a verification of that. We did a. A sustainable growth pilot study in, in uh, Councilman Phillips district and it verified I mean our, if, if things are done correctly and abide by our ordinances and we're I guess we're assuming it in an engineering model world where things are a little more perfect than reality sometimes but the ordinance does work it, see, it shows positive impact to everything around it but again it's under that caveat that everything has to be done perfectly like it would in the model um, so that's where we get into the engineer plans that are submitted to us in a review of that process. And also maintain. Yes, and maintain. Yes. All right, Ms. Seiden. Oh, I apologize. Oh, Mr. Smith and then Ms. Kath. Ross. Yes, sir. Back up. <laughs> okay, my question, um, how, how would the new UDC that we haven't implemented yet affect this plan as it's presented right now? Would it have much of an impact or would it be the same? Well, so what it does is, and what the UDC is, and again, I'm not the engineer, but I'm going to speak just in, in a general way about what the new UDC is. The land development code over the past 15 years or so has been edited changed, you know, and it became just very hard to deal with as a staff and as for consultants, uh, engineering consultants for developers, anybody throughout the parish, somebody wanting to build a home, as simple as that. So the old UDC gave specific, like, well, it gave general criteria or parameters for engineering design guidelines. What we've done is we've narrowed those down to specifics that you have to use for your engineering documents for hydro-related issues, you know, in, in, in uh, reports. So instead of one engineer saying, you know, I'm going to use this coefficient, and Daniel, just correct me if I'm wrong at any point, I'm just speaking in general, generalities here, um, I'm going to use this coefficient. And then we have to kind of go back and forth and negotiate what they're going to use. Now it's going to be a, a specific coefficient that they're going to use to draw these plans. That, so it's going to be more tailored to what St. Tammany Parish once, and it's going to be more uniform across the parish. Were you at the Planning and Zoning Commission when this was presented? Yes. Okay. Can you summarize uh, the commission's denial? Why? I, basically what the, um, I guess the opposition was saying, that traffic drains and things like that. Um, however, I disagree with their denial because it did meet all the requirements needed to make it to the next stage of preliminary when they could do the reports and the studies to get that information to present back to the commission. A denial at this lever, uh, level just denies them the opportunity to even do those studies. It's not like they're getting you know, an approval to go build. They're getting to preliminary. We're going to have a public hearing. We're going to have the engineering documents and we're going to review them. Yeah. And That's my and recollection because I, I watched it. Uh, I, I think the <clears throat> commission was saying we need to see those uh, numbers, those tests, those before before we. I, 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 correct no, me. No, no. I think you, I think you're correct. I, I think, think that's they what got their the denial was based on. And I think that was mistake. an incorrect denial. So that's the initial the, the uh, initial plat, the preliminary plat, the plan that they present, right? If they were to move forward, if this were to be overturned. They still need to go back before the Planning and Zoning Commission 
with numbers. Yeah, and, 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 and reviewed by such. staff and given a, an analysis. So it's not like just they're presenting them to the planning commission. They're presenting them to staff. We're doing an analysis and we're giving and them a report. And you make your determinations. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. I don't disagree with the planning and zoning commission much. I mean, they're a great commission, but you know, I just want to say I think this one was just maybe yeah, the I wrong mean, decision. I, you know, my initial thought is uh, I hate to I hate to overturn any recommendation that they make because I feel like they do a credible job. Agreed. And, um, it's a, it's, a, it's a tough one for me personally, um, but if we do overturn it, we're, we're not saying it's a green light. Okay, we're just saying you have now the opportunity to pursue the permits, et cetera, right? No, pursue the opportunity to, to get approval for work orders. But again, no permits. It would be a work no order. No permits because it's still got to go back for determinations by engineering. Correct. Et cetera. It's just giving them the green light to go get studies done. Uh, Mr. Phillips. Well, could, do oh, I, sorry, do, Mr. Do I have the Do I have the right to ask that young? That yes, young sir. You have the right. Spoke? Would you Would you come back up yes, for sir. a second? Thank you. Well, I, I, my, I, I really sympathize with your concerns, and 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 if I were living <clears> where you live. And these developments have all of a sudden made flooding in my yards, et cetera, a lot worse. And, and that's what we're talking about. I know traffic on Brewster is another issue, but and, I don't think this is going to require a traffic study. I really don't. I could be wrong, but it may. Uh, but the drainage, I, I get it. You know, uh, as, as Engineer Hill said, you know, in a perfect if perfect scenario of everything that plays out right, we're, we're supposed to take that property that's being proposed right here and have a 25% less runoff than it is today after this development, correct? But it just doesn't seem like things have been working out that way to me. So that's always kind of, it's kind of bothered me. And I'm not saying it's the engineering's fault or whoever, but, uh, I don't. I don't get it, and I and I think that's what you're saying. The, you know, that's why they, we're here. Right? That is why we're here. I, I don't. We get it. we they convinced. They may be meeting the requirements, but how come we still have increased <clears throat> flooding? You know? I I truly appreciate your sentiment. I really do, because you are absolutely on the on the same page as me. You what you said about overturning the the, the board of of planning development's decision. We're talking about subject matter experts that we presented enough information and concern and risk to who said, we're not passing this. And now we're here and we're, I'm, I apologize, I don't know anyone's background here. If you're well versed in planning and development and all the things that we've brought up here today, but we're talking about overturning the decisions of a board who's elected to do not what elected. that focus They're is. They're not elected. They're not elected. Oh, They're or appointed. Uh, by us. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, thank you for clarifying that. But. We are, we are in a scenario now where we're just gonna drive this process forward and those same committee members, those same board members also said that once that ball starts rolling, it's almost impossible to retract it. It's just like us saying, hey, we, we, if we could have fought this back in the uh, planning and zoning phase if, and, and fought the rezoning effort that you know, <clears throat> maybe that would have worked out for us in our favor. But now that it's done, what are the chances of ever going back to the previous zoning? Probably slim to none. But we're not addressing we're not addressing the issues that the planning and development board themselves agreed we have. There are risks that are outside of the purview and scope of this current process that is the reason we are here. And and I've I thought I made myself pretty clear with the bullet points that I brought up. We are talking about multiple issues in this region we have multiple exhibits that we presented where there are consistent news articles and facebook posts about bruce brewster and this exact area flooding about traffic issues about all the things that we experience and we just keep pushing forward let's just build more homes build more homes where is our infrastructure where's the infrastructure where's the safety where's the things that you campaigned on yourself yeah. Ms. No, I, so first of all, I want to get, this is not a zoning change, first of all, and I understand no, you're absolutely. frustrated. No, we're way past that, unfortunately, no, no, no. because there now we're no, here. There was no zoning change. That's what I'm saying. This is zoned 
Oh, no, no. It, it rezoned from 83 to 84 back in like 2020. <clears throat> okay. I did not. Yeah, no, it's 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 all that. problematic. Is what it is. But you know what? I uh, said, look, Nick, I digress. I I think I've I've made my point clear. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I'm getting anywhere, unfortunately. But I appreciate everyone listening to me here. Okay. That, yeah. Okay. Stop speaking, please, sir. Okay. Please. You don't have any more time. The councilwoman asked you a question. You answered it. Now you've gotten on a soapbox and you you're you're going off on a topic. Okay. So no. No, please have a seat, sir, or you can leave. And look, I know you're. Please, please have a seat, sir, have, or you can leave. Have a seat, and I'll have a seat, and I'll have a seat, and I'll, <clears throat> I'll. You can have a seat, and I'll finish. So I know you're frustrated, and um, and I know that we need to get what you said about getting to the next phase. And once the ball's rolling, it can't be stopped. That's just not true. If they get to this next phase, you you have the opportunity. Sir. Hold on. You have the opportunity, and I, w I do want to meet with you guys separately. I mean, like I said, you, you obviously have a lot of things that we need to talk about. But once it gets to this next phase, if they find that he is not fulfilling all the requirements, it will not be built, and you can appeal it again. I mean, but we need to at least give this man the opportunity to present the evidence to see if he can meet all the requirements. We're in the, it's, a, it's the wrong phase for you to do this, is what I'm trying to tell you, that this needs to be overturned because legally he has every right to build it right now. And once he gets to the next phase, if he can't meet all the requirements, it won't get built. So in effect, what you did was is you won too early in the process. Okay, you won when this is a paper theory, and Ross, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a paper exercise, okay? They're asking, they're at the stage of it before they can hire the subject matter experts. And let me correct you on one thing. Planning and zoning, they're very good people. They are not subject matter experts, okay? They are people who are chosen by us from our districts to represent us on the planning and zoning. They do the preliminary work so that we don't have to or they can make the recommendations for us. Y'all, in effect, y'all have won this, you, you beat it too early because he hasn't had the chance to hire the hydrologist, the engineers, to, to traffic studies, to things to prove or disprove what you're bringing up. That's what Miss Kathy Seiden's point is. It's almost like we're too ahead of the game right now. We need to give them a chance to see if it's even possible because they might find out it's not worth it to do the development, but they can't, they're stopped at this stage and right now we're taking away their legal right to proceed forward. <coughs> Ms. Seiden, do you wish to take action? I, I, yeah, I would. I'd like to, uh, to make a motion to overturn planning's denial. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second by Ms. Um, Mrs. Tanner. All right, we have a motion and a second. Everybody please vote. We're missing two, y'all. Did everybody vote? Check your machines. Martha's going on and Jimmy's back. The motion passes with 11 yeas, one nay, and two absent. All right. Moving on to ordinances for adoption. You need to oh. adopt the resolution. Oh, sorry. We need a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Ms. Seid, do you want to make a motion to adopt the resolution? Yes. All right, we have a motion from Ms. Seid. Do we have a second? Mrs. Tanner? Vote our machines. Guys, check your machines, please. Did y'all vote? The motion passes with 11 yeas, one nay, and one absence. I mean, two absent. I definitely lost. It's 10 o'clock. Hmm? Yeah. 
All right, moving on to ordinances for adoption. Ordinance calendar number 7127AA, ordinance to amend portions of ordinance, council series number 12, 2207, adopted April 5th, 2012, codified as section 40-333A of the Code of Ordinances of the Parish of St. Tammany, which established and validated fees for sewage and water services provided by systems owned and operated by the parish. Motion, second. Mr. Kugel. I, uh, I, don't, I don't want to take time to pull up the uh, actual ordinance, but I, I just want to make sure I believe that there's an administrative note that says this, it does not a rate increase. Is that correct, Emily? For, for users, for customers? Um, I believe that's Is Mr. Tissue still here? At the end, I just want to make sure. I think it's, is it mentioned? I thought it was mentioned. <clears throat> okay, this is not a rate increase for monthly water and sewer services. Rather, a necessary. Can I read this real quick? Rather, this necessary to this is necessary to address increased costs of providing water sewer capacity at development level. Okay, I, I just want to make sure it's not a rate increase. Yeah, I believe it's a connection rate increase when you a new development connects to our system. So the, <clears throat> okay. Okay, so what the new development would. That. Yeah, Mr. Tisha, would you say that really quick? So this is not a rate increase on our people. This is for new developments coming in, correct? That is correct. This is for new connections for, as developments come in, uh, connection fees, capacity fees. This does not impact the existing user rates at all. Okay, so Tammany Utilities users will not have a rate increase from this? No, this will not result in a rate okay. increase for any of the Department of Utility users. Okay. All right. All right, do we have a motion? Oh, sorry, Mr. Corbin, I to apologize. Clarify, Chris, this does not, but it doesn't mean that Tammany Utilities will never have a rate increase. No, at, at some point there will be a rate increase. And Perfect. I just want to make sure business, this, is, this, is, this, this is not. This specific ordinance <laughs> right. specifically is for sorry, capacity David, fees only. Yeah. But any thank sort you. of rate increase would have to come back before the council. Absolutely. All right, thank you. All right, do we have a motion and a second? Do we have, wait, who's the motion? Did you move on to Mr. Bender or would, did anybody make a motion to adopt? Oh, Mr. Bender, did you wish to speak? No, Okay. Is there a motion? Okay, Ms. Ms. Seiden, Mrs. Seiden, do we have a second? Second. All right, vote your machines. Everybody, please check your machines. Make sure you voted. One more. Still missing one, y'all. With a verbal yes from Ms. Tanner, the motion is unanimous with two Fs. Item two, ordinance calendar number 7517, ordinance amending the official zoning map of the St. Tammany Parish Code of Ordinances, Chapter 130, Unified Development Code, Division 25, HC2, Highway Commercial District, amend section 130-918 permitted uses, increase the maximum allowable building size under HC2, Highway Commercial District for automotive repair and service facilities not to exceed 10,000 square feet to 40,000 square feet and Division 26 HC2A Highway Commercial District amend section 130-945 permitted uses increase the maximum allowable building size under HC2A for automotive repair and service faci services facilities not to exceed 10,000 square feet to 75,000 square feet. Mr. Phillips. Oh, sorry, Mr. Kugel, you're first. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to need some questions from Ross. All right, Mr. Liner, which I think he left. <laughs> He's coming back. He'll, oh, okay. still yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Sorry. So, Ross, I, I appreciate it. Uh, I know we talked about this before during yes. the introduction, but I just wanted to go over it again because I, I guess my concern is that I know me and Joe talked about this earlier a little bit, but 
uh, it, it does amend HC2A, but also HC2. So if you could just walk me through that, you're basically four times greater of a an area. And I guess my concern is you have, I have a lot of HC2 in my district, a lot of people do. This could end up having a, so how am I wrong? That, I'm sorry, go ahead. You know, the HC2 and 2A have permitted uses. The permitted maximum building size for each Let's say the perm, and I'm, I don't have, have HC2 and 2A in front of me, but the permitted uses in each maybe are 10, 12, 15, whatever they are. For 99% of the permitted uses in those zoning classifications, the maximum building size in HC2 is 40,000 square feet, except for one use. It was 10,000 square feet. So what we're doing is just changing the one permitted use that had a max of 10,000 square feet to match the rest of the uses at 40,000 square feet. So we're not increasing the maximum building size for, for the entire zoning classification. We're correcting one that had a smaller maximum building size to meet and match the others. Okay, so I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but yeah. how many other types are at 40,000 would you, if you had to take a ballpark? 10 or 15, I'm assuming, or 15 or 20. And how often do we have um, automotive repair and services? How often do we get permits as compared to other There's things? actually, so up on 190, We've had to do several zoning changes, and we had to do several zoning change negotiations in front of the zoning commission because of going to HC3 for a bigger building size. Mm -hmm. So we noticed a pattern of people not wanting to go to a more intense zoning classification just for a building size. So to correct and not have more zoning intensification of uses in that area, instead of going to HC3, what we did is we resolved that with increasing the maximum building size for that one use to match the rest of the permitted use in that district. Is that, then, com is that coming out clear? Yeah, and then the then the HC2A is, goes from 10,000 to 75,000. That's correct. So the rest of the uses in HC2A are 75,000, and it, this just meets the rest of the uses within HC2A. So is, is it, a, I don't want to say is it a legitimate concern, because I don't, I don't put myself on the spot. Is it a legitimate concern that you could have basically an existing zoning that could end up you know, all of a sudden people like, hey, I, I expected this to be like 10,000 limited to that. All of a sudden you're going to get a 75,000. No. So what we found is they want the more uh, building size uh, criteria in that zoning district rather than rezoning more to intense. a more intense zoning classification just to get a bigger size building. Okay. You following me? Yeah. Okay. So, but is that usually the, the more intense concern? Of yeah, the, they don't um, want all the uses that come to HC3 just because a car dealership wants to go in okay. with a bigger building. So I, I guess that my question is um, the people that, the, the concern is usually the person that, the people that didn't prefer not having a more intensive are like the, the surrounding Correct. residents yep. or the owners? No, no, the, the surrounding the, residents. They pref So they prefer, okay. To keep it less intense, but because, you know, okay. usually it's car dealerships and they're typically fine with that. They don't want everything else that goes along with HC3 just to have a car dealership with a bigger size. So your view is that the residents around this would prefer this? Absolutely. Okay. We get opposition when they want to go to an HC3. We got zero opposition for this common sense change. Okay. Mr. Phillips? <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to say I support the ordinance. I just wanted to confirm one thing. We did... Uh, clarify that the building is back far enough in case it, okay. All right, Mr. Impostato. Is this consistent with the new UDC? Yes, we changed, we corrected this. Okay. All right, so do we have a motion? I'll move to move. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Impostato and second by Mr. Smith. Please vote your machines. We're missing one, y'all. Check your, uh, Jerry got up. I'm sorry. The motion is unanimous with three absent. Item number three, ordinance calendar number 7533, ordinance amending the official zoning map of St. Tammany Parish to reclassify a certain parcel located on the west side of Curtano Road, south of Harrison Avenue, Covington, and which Property comprises a total of 1.46 acres of land, more or less, from its present A4A to Highway Commercial 1 and NC2, Ward 3, District 2. Mr. Rowling. 
Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Um, basically, just a, a couple of seconds here to talk about the project, or this property rather. Um, the subject property, property is currently developed with the law office um, for at least 25 years and is just coming into compliance from a legal non-conforming use. So the zone, Zoning Commission did recommend approval, so I would ask to consider for approval, please. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? second. Mr. Smith, we have a motion and a second. Please vote your machines. Motion is unanimous with Do five absent. Do we still have a quorum? Yes. Okay. I was counting quorum votes really quick. I'd, uh, item number four, ordinance calendar number 7534, ordinance amending the official zoning map of St. Tammany Parish to reclassify a certain parcel located on the northeast corner of US Highway 190 East and Shamrock Road Slide L, and which property comprises a total of 1.7 1.767 acres of land, more or less, from its present HC2 and NC4 to an A3 suburban district, Ward 8, District 13. Mr. Corbin. Uh, this property is, is property that's undeveloped. It's right next to Stark's offices on Fremo, and this would be a new Stark home. So I'm in favor of it. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with four absent. Item number five, ordinance calendar number 7535, ordinance amending the official zoning map of St. Tammany Parish to reclassify a certain parcel located on the west side of Highway Department Road being 38123 Highway Department Road, Pearl River, and which property comprises a total of 4.2509 acres of land, more or less from its present I-4 to PF-1, Ward 9, District 9, Mr. Kugel. This is the uh, school board taking over old uh, Slidell Welding, I think, business. Uh, not, they're going to use this not only for uh, bus storage, but also they're going to open up, uh, may have some welding classes and such for Pearl River High. Uh, so it's, it's a good, it works all around. So I so move. So move we have a motion to adopt. Yeah. Second from Ms. O'Brien. Motion and a second. Please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with three absent. Item number six, ordinance calendar number 7536, ordinance amending the official zoning map of St. Tammany Parish to reclassify a certain parcel located on the north side of LA Highway 36 east, east of Bullard Street, Covington, and which property comprises a total of 0.64 acres of land more or less from its present NC4 to HC2, Ward 3, District 2. Mr. Rowling. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The subject property is currently developed with a warehouse on that property and is just coming into um, compliance from a legal non-conformant use. So again, the Zoning Commission has recommended approval, so I ask for consideration and I'll make a motion. All right, we have a motion to adopt. Do we have a second? Second. Ms. Mrs. Tanner, motion and a second, please vote. Item number seven, oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number seven, ordinance calendar number 7537, ordinance amending the official zoning map of St. Tammany Parish to reclassify a certain parcel located on the southeast side of McGee Road, east of LA Highway 1077 Covington, and which property comprises a total of one acre of land, more or less, from its a1 to A2 and MHO overlay, Ward 1, District 3. Motion. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, Mr. Rowland, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. Has everybody voted? Mr. Rowland, what was your vote? 
true. Yeah, give a yes. Okay. With a verbal yes from Mr. Rowling, the motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number eight, ordinance calendar number 7538, ordinance authorizing the parish of St. Tammany through the office of the parish president to declare former sewage district number six property as surplus and authorize the sale, exchange, and or disposal of said property to the town of Abita Springs, Ward 10, District 6. I make the motion. All right, a motion and a set, Mr. Impostato. Please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number nine, ordinance calendar number 7539, ordinance, ordinance to authorize the parish of St. Tammany through the office of the parish president to acquire certain property for the St. Tammany Parish Library System, Ward 7, mm -hmm. District 7. Mr. Impostato, mm -hmm. second by Mr. Binder. Please vote your machines. Oh, Mr. Kugel, you had your light on? Uh, Joe, I know we talked, I just want to make sure this is your, it's very, I saw this very small mm -hmm. library now, you're going to just be building a new, bigger one to replace yes. it? Okay. Joe and Jerry, right? Yeah. The motion is unanimous with two F's. <laughs> <laughs> Item number Item number 10, ordinance calendar number 7540, ordinance authorizing the parish of St. Tammany through the office of the parish president to acquire certain parcels, rights of way, and or servitudes for the 11th Street Drainage Project, Ward 3, Districts 2 and 5. Mr. Phillips? I move to do so. All right, we have a motion and a second, Mr. Impostato. Please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number 11, ordinance calendar number 7541, ordinance to amend the 2024 operating budget, amendment number eight. Uh, Mr. Burke, Mr. Impostato, please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number 12, ordinance calendar number 7542, ordinance to amend the 2024 capital improvement budget and capital assets, amendment number 13, sales tax district three, capital projects. Mr. Okay, Mr. Bender, Mr. Impostato, please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number 13, ordinance calendar number 7543, ordinance to amend the 2024 capital improvement budget and capital assets, amendment number 14, disaster relief capital projects. Mr. Burke, do we have a second? second. Miss, uh, Mrs. Seiden, we have a motion and a second. Please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number 14, ordinance calendar number 7544, ordinance to amend the 2024 capital improvement budget and capital assets. Amendment number 15, St. Tammany Parish Library capital assets. Mr. Rowling, do we have a second? Mr. Mr. Phillips, we have a motion and a second, please vote. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number 15, ordinance calendar number 7545, ordinance to amend the 2024 capital improvement budget and capital assets, amendment number 16, culture and recreation, um, Tammany Trace administration capital projects. Do we have a so moved. All right, Mr. Um, Impostato, Mrs. Um, Tanner, please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number 16, ordinance calendar number 7546, ordinance to amend the 2024 capital improvement budget and capital assets, amendment number 17, information technology and capital assets. Mr. Burke, do we have a second, Mrs. O'Brien? We have a motion and a second. Please vote. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number 17, ordinance calendar number 7547, ordinance to amend the 2024 capital improvement budget and capital assets, amendment number 18, public works, maintenance barns, capital assets. Miss, okay, um, Tanner and Smith. We have a motion and a second, please vote. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number eight, 
18, ordinance calendar number 7548, ordinance to amend the 2024 capital improvement budget and capital assets, amendment number 19. No, okay, Mr. Impostato, and Mr. Burke. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead. Has everybody, Has everybody voted? The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item, item number 19, ordinance calendar number 7549, ordinance to amend the 2024 grants budget, amendment number three. Mr. Burke. Second. Second, Mr. Impostato. Please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with two absent. <laughs> Item number 20, ordinance calendar number 7550, ordinance to amend the 2023 grants budget, amendment number, tw amendment number 12. Mr. Bender, <laughs> Mr. Impostato, please vote your machines. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number 21, ordinance calendar number 7551 AA, ordinance to amend the 2024 grants budget, amendment number four. Ms. O'Brien, do we have a second? Mr. Burke. Mr. Burke, please vote. <laughs> Mr. Corbin, what was your vote? With a verbal yes from Mr. Corbin, the motion is unanimous with two absent. Thank you. Item number 22, ordinance calendar number 7552, ordinance accepting finalized subdivision into the road and drainage inventory, specifically Grand Maison Phase 3B, Ward 4, District 5, Mr. Phillips. I so moved. Second. Second by Mr. Rowling. Please vote. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number 23, ordinance calendar number 7553, ordinance accepting finalized subdivision into the road and drainage inventories, Versailles Business Park Phase 2, Ward 3, District 5. Mr. Phillips. I so move. Do we have a second? Aye. Mr. Impostato, please vote. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number 24, ordinance calendar number 7554, ordinance to extend the six month moratorium on the receipt of submissions by the Parish Planning and Zoning Commission for the resubdivision or rezoning of property and or the issuance of certain permits by the Parish Department of Planning and Development permits for the construction of certain building structures on property in the area bounded by the north by Interstate 12 by the west by Old Todd Road and Transmitter Road and bounded to the east by North Shore Boulevard and Highway 433 south of Interstate 12 to Bayou Liberty Road, Jefferson Avenue, Napoleon Avenue, Florian Road, Laurent Road, and to Lake Pontchartrain being the portion of Parish Council Number District 11. Thank you, Mr. Bender. Second. Second, Mr. Burke. Do we need to, okay, so I need to take a second and explain this is a, a super fragile area that I, um, I've commissioned with the help of the administration and especially the engineering and the development office. And we have a, launched a study into sustainable uh, development for this area. This is my fragilest area. This is Bayou Liberty where we have the most um, incidences of severe repetitive loss where we've had to pay money to elevate houses to stop flooding. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Please vote. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Thank you. Item number 25, ordinance to extend a six month moratorium on the receipts of submission by the Parish Planning and Zoning Commission for the placement of mobile home overlay or resubdivision or rezoning of property and or the issuance of permits by the Parish Department of Planning and Development Permits for the construction or placement of any mobile home building structure in the area in District 6, commencing at the intersection of Highway 41 and Earl Bennett Road in District 6, excluding properties located at 
37360-37380 and 37402 Howard O. Berry Road as specifically described herein and on the attached map and in the attachment titled New Boundary Legal. Ward 6, District 6. I'll make a motion. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, second by Mr. Corbin. Please vote. We're missing one, y'all. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number 26, ordinance calendar number 7556, ordinance to extend a moratorium on receipt of submissions by the Planning and Zoning Commission for rezoning a property which would result in an increase in the allowable density of residentially zoned parcel greater than A4, A4, A4 four units per acre, a planned unit development overlay, or a traditional neighborhood development parish-wide. So moved. Okay, we have a motion and a First, second. second. Um, President Cooper, would you like to give the explanation for this one, or Mr. Hoop? Okay. Mr. Corb? What's the sunset plan for this? The new... Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Hmm? Motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number 27, ordinance calendar number. Um, oh, we did. I'm sorry. You're right. Item number 28, ordinance calendar number 7558, ordinance to amend the St. Tammany Parish Code of Ordinances, part one, code of ordinances, chapter 22, license taxes and regulation to add new article 13, section 22600, qualified first responders, ad valorem tax exemption to adopt ad valorem tax exemption of up to $2,500 of the assessed valuation of property receiving the homestead exemption that is owned and occupied by a qualified first responder pursuant to Louisiana Constitution article number 7 section 210. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Impostato. I think there's still some confusion on who qualifies for this and I hadn't had the chance to look into it. I don't know that any other council members have, but I think we should postpone it for a month and because it is a substantial amount of money we're looking at for the parish, but I'd just like the chance to look in, look into it further. Second. All right, so we have a motion and a second to postpone. Who is this? Second. Um, second is Mr. Kugel. Please vote your machines. Mr. Impostato, what was your vote? You have to say Obviously, it. it was yes. <laughs> <laughs> with the verbal yes from Mr. Impostato, the motion is unanimous with two yes. Mr. Corbin, this one's yours. Ordinance calendar number 7559AA, ordinance to amend the St. Tammany Parish Code of Ordinances, Part 1, Code of Ordinances, Chapter 2, Administration, Article 3, Parish Council, Section 2-75, Agenda Format, to establish a one-minute time limit for public comment on procedural motions to postpone any item on a Parish Council agenda. We have, and a second. Oh, Mr. Kugel? I, I think it would be, I think, just for public, just to explain it real quick. Just, we go. Happy to explain it. Just for a procedural move, instead of the three-minute time limit that's given people to discuss things we're voting on and issues, this is only for a procedural move. The person have one minute to tell us yes, they agree with the procedural move to delay, or no, they do not agree with our decision to postpone or the motion to postpone. All right. We have a motion and a second. I'll start it. All right, and a third. Let's vote. And third. <laughs> oh, man, I like that, Pat. The motion is unanimous with two absent. Item number 30, ordinance calendar number 7560, ordinance to amend the code of ordinances of St. Tammany Parish, part one, chapter 35, roads and bridges, article one, by adding section 35-35, directional boring operations to protect underground utilities. Mr. Kugel, Mr. Corbin. So moved. Mr. Corbin, second. Motion and a second. The motion right. is unanimous with two absent. 
Item number 31, ordinance calendar number 7562, ordinance amending the official zoning map of St. Tammany Parish to reclassify a certain parcel located on the north side of Louisiana Highway 22 West, being 1846 Louisiana Highway 22 West, Madisonville, and which property comprises a total of 7.001 acres of land more or less from its A2 to CBF-1, Ward 1, District 1. Mr. Smith. Second. Second. We have motion and a second. I'm missing six votes. We're missing six votes, guys. Everybody check. We're missing six votes. <laughs> the motion is unanimous with two Fs. I'd like a um, motion. I'd, I'd accept a motion to adjourn at this point. Second. Second. Vote. Thank you. I was an hour off. It was, par it was President Cooper's eight-minute video. Yeah, video. <laughs> it was your eight-minute video. That threw me off. <laughs>